on up. I'm in the green world. So I put five minutes on the countdown so I could uh, search the book specifically for one quote that I wanted to pull out. So I'm still looking. Um, and in the meantime, <laughs> I will add uh, my background. Are we feeling... Are we feeling Arizona? Or are we feeling Austin? I'm feeling I'm feeling Austin today. No, I'm feeling I'm feeling Austin today. Hey, Anna Lacroix, right in the corner. Uh, thank you for joining. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being patient. I need a little extra time because we're starting early, so we're actually early or the normal. Uh, this is looking good. <laughs> Did I play with this and pop this while sitting at this desk? You tell me. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is going to be a fun show. And by fun, I mean interesting. I have uncovered so many truths, so many hards, guys, um, in the last week since we last met. And thank you to everyone, for everyone who's here. And special thank you <laughs> to the real ones. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, to all the members who joined the last week. Thank you so much. Tarot Cat, Toilet Gate. Am I the only hippie? Uh, so much fun in the chat. I love seeing all the emojis and I have put in an order for more. So as fast as the graphic designer can uh, be, there will be more updates. So if you're interested in joining, do it. You are privileged AF. You guys are privileged AF that there's a membership with actual emojis, okay? I'm super freaking privileged. Super freaking privileged. Um, okay, I found it. Yes. All right. Uh, today's show is sponsored by Save the Manatees. Uh, not the actual organization, just the um, just the cause of saving the manatees. If you have a manatee in your life, uh, not a man with a t-shirt on, uh, but an actual sea cow, save them. You can discard the man. Okay. Get your hearts ready, everybody. Get your hearts ready. There's a lot to cover. Um, okay, first things first. As you saw probably through the, th the thumbnail, I'm finally going to now make the comparison, and there'll probably be more to add as time goes on. <laughs> Let's be real. Um, but I'm ready to make the comparison. I'm a little bit shifted. Okay. Between Heidi Powell and Rachel Hollis. I cannot stop <laughs> anymore. Um, I've been compiling a list, essentially, of the, the ways in which... I believe, personally, Heidi Powell is stealing, and I say stealing very loosely, and this is just my opinion once, once again, just my opinions, not facts, <laughs> never facts on this channel or any channel that I'm a part of, um, but in my opinion, Heidi seems to have taken the Rachel Hollis playbook, and, and to be fair, Rachel Hollis also took her quotes and many things from other various self-help people, so is anything really anyone's original idea anymore? I say no, um, but there's some like more obvious examples. And most recently, uh, Lisa Bilyeu just did an interview and Lisa Bilyeu is Tom Bilyeu's wife. Tom Bilyeu is one of the co-founders of Quest Nutrition. Uh, him and his wife, Lisa, they now run a YouTube channel and company, um, which I guess it is a company, but you know, I say that again loosely. Uh, it's mostly a YouTube channel. Oh, thank you. Tuli Unruly uh, has a hippo character waving hands in front of neck with an awkward look on his face to signal that the player is done. Well, for that, I say... I don't regret anything. Tuli Unruly, thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. You are not. Douche Lord. Uh. Douche Lord. You are not. That I think. I don't think you are, based on nothing my boyfriend my boyfriend says you're not so there you go um also truly duly untruly no tr truly unruly here's the final question for you to figure out let me know by the end of the show what happened to dinosaurs thank you uh so lisa bilyeu has a show basically based on her husband's show which is to interview people but instead of interviewing people in their normal set um they she interviews women with a pink set <laughs> so we're gonna watch some of that it's two hours long most of it is pretty boring but there are some key things in there 
that I think are sort of juicy, sort of interesting. Um, this is Rachel's attempt to again, garner attention for her live tour. Finally, she's starting to do some marketing for it. It starts next week. So it's, you know, it's almost like too late, not yet, but I mean, it's getting to the point where, you know, tickets need to be sold. Um, we'll talk about ticket sales, where that's at. Dave is fairly boring. He is like, you know, continuing to try to, um, be dad of the year, sounds about the same. Heidi has been quiet now because her launch of her 60 day challenge has been, um, started. So now she's, she's got nothing to sell. So she's been kind of quiet on the sense of selling as hard as she has, but she just recently made a post that was like, wait, 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 <laughs> this is what Rachel Hollis just said. And there was two things that I found in that post and something she posted today that I was like, wait, 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 wait. I just learned about that in Rachel Hollis's latest interview is she getting her information from Rachel and then like using it immediately? And this is not just one instance. There's like several examples, including from this book um, that I wanna start with. So I'm kind of jumping all over the place, bear with me. So who are these people? If you're coming here for the first time, I'm assuming you know who everyone is. Um, but just in case, Heidi Powell is a fitness influencer who was on the show Extreme makeover weight loss edition. <laughs> I got it right for once. No. No, I was right. Stop it, Heidi. With her husband, ex-husband now, Chris Powell, and uh, they got divorced back in 2020. Then Dave Hollis, who used to be married to Rachel Hollis, who Dave used to be a Disney executive. Rachel Hollis was a... Um, Oh yes, wait, 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 sorry, I'm looking at your comments. I see the financial diet. I did watch that. Shout out to Savvy, shout out to Camelia, you, 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 who is, uh, who is my co-host. I mean, Savvy is now my co-host, but also shout out to her. <laughs> they got mentioned, and guess who did not get mentioned? Me. <laughs> sorry, I'm not bitter about it at all. <laughs> Bold face lie. No, it's okay. I'll recover. They are very good at covering Rachel Hollis and covering her from the beginning. I sort of came in <laughs> late in the game. Anyways, back to what I said, was saying. So those are the players. Chris Powell, fitness influencer. Not going to talk much about him. Talked about him a ton last week. Everyone thinks I have a crush on him. You're right. No, I just think he's not as problematic as the rest of them. Uh, but the bar is low. Heidi Powell's fitness influencer comes from TV, started dating Dave Hollis. Dave Hollis was Rachel Hollis's uh, husband. They had marriage conferences together. They, he was the CEO of her company. They had a horrible divorce, still going through the divorce, basically back and forth custody. It's a whole mess. Okay, that's where we end up. Now, Dave and Heidi are together. So if you're brand new, you're watching this, or you're the spouse of someone watching this, you got the basic, basic, basic understanding. Okay, so brings us up to Dave and Heidi getting together. Now, before Dave got into the picture with Heidi, Heidi was like a fitness influencer, a tiny bit of like tough love, you know, mental, not mental health, but like emotional distress, really. <laughs> you know, telling people like, in order to really lose weight, you have to change, you know, yourself from the inside out. That was sort of her thing. I am not emotionally stable. Okay. <laughs> but she gets divorced from Chris. And then, you know, pretty quickly after Rachel and Dave announced their divorce, Heidi and Dave are together. And even with their uh, getting together, there were similarities. Now, there's a clip of it. I don't even have to go. I'm just going to tell you about it because there's other things I can show you to kind of, you know, show that. They're actually, it looks like Heidi might be taking some notes from Rachel. But when Dave met Heidi, he invited Heidi to Texas to his house. Well, Noah was there, which I was sort of surprised. Noah is Dave's daughter. Um, and she was in the house. They were going to record a podcast, but Dave couldn't stop crying. And um, they didn't report the, report the 
record the podcast. But after they met in person, they started texting each other back and forth song lyrics of different songs that they liked and whatever. And that, if you remember, is the same exact story that Dave and Rachel had when Rachel was 19 and Dave was 27 and she was a intern slash low level employee employee at Miramax. She met Dave because he came in for an appointment and with her boss, I guess. And then they started texting each other back or emailing back in that day, those day, back in those days. And um, they sent each other rap lyrics back and forth before they wanted a date. So even in the first like courtship, there was similarities. Uh, bonjour Nancy, bonjour Nancy says, video game controller jumps up and down excitedly. <laughs> you didn't say that, did you? You just acted it out via emoji. And for that, bonjour Nancy, this is for you. It's okay to cry. It is okay to cry. And also, but also keep in mind, oops. They're gonna be dropping some really powerful, amazing, life-changing shiz. They are, and by they, I mean me. Okay, so that's comparison number one. All right, comparison number two. Um, as we know, you know, Heidi is sort of becoming now a self-help guru, or she wants to be, at least. Um, and so that means she's got to kind of, you know, grift on to certain things that they all do. So it's not like Rachel Hollis is the only one who's ever done this. But I think the fact that both Heidi and Rachel have done certain things kind of shocks me. Oh, I got to fix my green screen again. Or maybe I don't. Maybe I'll just do a generic one. How about a castle? Yeah, okay. That sounds good. Okay, so here's one. First of all, show up. Show up is something that Rachel had coined. And she actually is still, as far as I know, like as of yesterday, is selling show up branded stickers on her website. So not that she owns the phrase show up, but that was something that she had talked about or used at various points of her career, so much so that she had show up branded merch. Okay, and so here we see Heidi with literally, she's got the show up summit, sus, as she called it, which is a live event. So not only was she sort of taking show up that Rachel already had content around and merch around. She took the phrase. Okay. On top of that, as you see Heidi reading a children's book at the live event, which is something that Rachel has done at her rise conferences. At least a few times she read Rosie, the Riveter children's book. Now my opinion on this, I think it's dumb. I know a lot of women think it's cool and cute and sweet. I just think if you're at a professional entrepreneurial conference for empowering women, reading a children's book to them, to me is stupid. <laughs> it makes it seem like it's easy for people to mock it. Like, oh, you're at a little baby conference. You're at a conference. Oh, they're going to read you a little children's book. It's like, how about, you know, instead of that, we can like, you know, do a power hour or talk about how we're going to get, you know, increased salaries in the workplace and how we can band together as women and, and, you know, demand rights in our, in our, you know, maternity leave for God's sakes, instead of like, I'm going to read a children's book, but I know that's a hot take. I'm sorry. It is infantilizing to me, but Heidi is cool with it. She's fine with it. So she's like, all right, <laughs> I'm going to take this idea and run with it. So that's one thing. Let's see what else is next. Oh, okay, so some of these might be jumping around a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't have time. I'm so sorry, but I, if you go back to one of the old streams, um, it's the one that's got the magnifying glass, and it says like the thumbnails, like she didn't. This isn't for our eyes. Um, it's uh, they used Vimeo. They forgot both Heidi and Rachel. Both forgot to private their Vimeo pages, at least for a small amount of time. And they had videos labeled like accountability upsell. And Rachel's was like, um, journal power journal upsell. So they labeled them like, I know it's all marketing and I know we all know that upsells exist and there's a whole theory behind sales and pushing things forward, but it's also sort of jarring to see it like written out <laughs> like that. So not only did Rachel make the mistake um, and I talked about it in one of those streams and showed it and like watched it. 
It was labeled like upsell for journal. Um, Heidi also did it for her challenge. There's, you know, just like sort of sloppily upselled labeled videos. Okay, that's another one. We all know Rachel has been obsessed with The Rock forever. She's been trying to manifest a relationship, a friendship with uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um, she's done vlogs about it. She she got like he sent her some tequila. She's taste tested his energy drinks. She always on Rage Talk back before they got rid of the office was saying, um, oh, you know, they're, my kids are going to call him Uncle DJ or whatever. So this is just a one time instance. But um, <laughs> but but Heidi tagged The Rock because she literally wore a black tank top one time <laughs> and jeans I guess I don't know but it's just interesting I, it feels like that's a very well-known thing if you're in the Rachel Hollis universe that that she's obsessed with the rock uh thank you Maddie uh Maddie says my boo thing is on their way home and listening to the stream can I get a Dave Ooh, I love that sound or perchance a Dave song happy Monday well you know what Maddie you can get both because you asked so nicely <laughs> Oh, I love that sound. I love that sound too. Um, and before uh, we move forward. Why do you follow me if you don't already own my book? That one goes out directly to Maddie as they are driving home. The boo thing is in the car. And this one, this one goes out to Maddie's partner. I love you. Aw, so sweet. Who's that for? Boo thing. Who is that? My boyfriend. There you go, Maddie. <laughs> that one's for you. Okay, uh, that's that. Okay, this is an easy one. Backwards hat. There seems to be a backwards hat trend. Maybe it's the age group that they're in. They're not much older than me. I'm 30, I'm 31. Rachel's 39. Heidi's 40. So maybe it's a thing like, you know, I just cool kids they put the backwards hat on when they're doing videos but both Heidi and Rachel both do this with their hats um that's a simple one <laughs> here's another simple one this is for sale currently on Heidi Powell's website you can buy this like she's got like this ringlet of quotes and it's a quote that I've heard Rachel Haas say 17,000 times um but before we, we read the quote we, we before we read the quote I've like turned my voice into a literal <laughs> Problem. Okay. Uh, Lauren, thank you so much, Lauren. Lauren Swisher used a character handing over a cup of coffee saying, for you. Exactly. Wow. That was set up perfectly. And uh, you made it so clear, clear, clear. Clear, clear, clear. <laughs> thank you, Lauren. <laughs> thank you, Lauren. And I just want to say this to Lauren. Most people won't get up at 4 a.m. Quote that, bitch. <laughs> Not you, Lauren. Rachel. Um, okay. I do appreciate that. Uh, so this is a quote. I think it's a Tony Robbins quote, or at least that's what Rachel attributes the Tony Robbins. She attributes this quote to Tony Robbins and basically, and, and savvy, if you're a savvy fan, she's got even, she's got merch where it's like life happens three you because it's a play on life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. So stop bitching and start waking up and working out and being perfect at all times. Um, and so Heidi's got, she chose to display the merch, specifically uh, this quote, which I thought was interesting. It says, I can see everything that happens as something that is happening to me, or I can see it as something that is happening for me. So I might as well choose to be grateful. Choosing joy, baby. Uh, yeah, so it's interesting that she chose that specific quote to display on her website to show off that she's got show up and show off um, that she's got these quote cards that are basically hanging on like a little key ring and you can like look at them and I don't know, be inspired, I guess. But that quote specifically, the one that Rachel talks about in like every podcast. Okay, so that's that grouping. Now let me go back and pick the next grouping. So are we convinced yet? Have I, have I, um, have I convinced you all yet? Uh, and I'll show you more proof of the show up stuff stand by okay proofy proof proof 
here's Rachel in a show up hat. That is not Heidi's hat. Uh, this is uh, this is old ish before the the divorce, I believe. Um, so I mean, you know, uh, Heidi, you showed up too late. Rachel already claimed that one. And then this one is the most egregious and obvious one. Um, this, I'm rooting for you. I love you, and I'm rooting for you. Um, oh, too much noise. Am I making noise? I'm sorry. <laughs> Am I screaming? Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> it's okay to cry. Um, I'm trying to read the comments. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let me know if this sounds horrible or anything. I can't tell unless you guys say something. Um, okay, yeah, this one. I love you. I'm rooting for you. Um, all this, I don't know if, if Heidi has done this forever. All I know is Rachel's done this forever. And recently, in the last year or so, I've seen Heidi start to do this just like randomly. Um, again, who's to say who's doing it first? I don't know. Uh, thank you, Holly. 18 stinking bucks. Thank you so much. Uh, Holly H says, happy to finally be catching alive. Listening to your content makes me laugh while doing dishes. You have a great sense of humor, Kayla. Oh my gosh. I need to clear, clear, clear that from my mind or else I will get a big ego. Clear, clear, clear. I just really wanted to burp too. <laughs> you know, when you, you play a sound effect so you can like really burp for real and get it over with. Um... This one's for you, Holly H. I know, I'm going to predict your fantasy right now. Ready? You are going to marry Dave Hollis. <laughs> you never know. The night is young. He's still available technically, right? There's a first for everything. There is a first for everything. Um, but for that amount, I know specifically I must use this sound bite. It is 18 American dollars. How much? 18 stinking dollars. Thank you, Holly H. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so that's that. Now, what else is there? Is that all you have, Kia? Is that all you have? That's all your stupid proof? Um, okay, you know how I said the butterfly thing? So if you're familiar with Heidi Powell's show up summit, the whole theme of it, apparently, uh, was, you know, oh, if you're a butterfly, don't be a butterfly, or no, don't be a caterpillar when you could be a butterfly. And to be around caterpillar people is like a bad thing, whatever the fuck that means. And basically, I think it means like, if you aren't constantly buying, um, you know, personal development crap and going to these stupid overpriced events, um, you know, in Chandler, Arizona, then you're a caterpillar person. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I got. I didn't go to this event. I was just watching it via Instagram. Um, let me find one to give you an example. There was actual live butterflies as part of the event where they released them in the parking lot of a TGI Fridays. Um, at least that's what it looked like. Oh, wait, here it is. <laughs> here, hold on. Um, and I thought, okay, this is at least Heidi's original work, right? Like I have never heard Rachel Hollis talk about butterflies, but then I reread Girl, Wash Your Face. And lo and behold, uh, there was, oops, come on, there it is, oops, there's the real butterfly that they released into the parking lot, come on, there it is, a live butterfly release that they put in paper somehow, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, what, but okay, but I found the quote, uh, Rebecca Romana, thank you so much. Hey, marrying Dave is my grand scheme. That's true. We did remember that from last time. Um, it's going to be a fight to the death. It's going to be extreme makeover, marry Dave Hollis edition. <laughs> you are going to marry Dave Hollis. And you can become sister wives, I guess. We're best friends. <laughs> the night is young, like I said. Uh, thank you. And we're still affirming that um, 
we're still affirming the marriage for you, Rebecca. All right, so um, everyone get your books out. Uh, this is from page 122. I know you all own this book, or you wouldn't be here. Um, page 122 of Girl, Wash Your Face uh, says, this is the last paragraph. Now, this is just to, to talk about butterflies. No, this is Rachel Haas, obviously. And this is from the chapter about... Other people's kids are so much cleaner, better, organized, and more polite. Lastly, remember the butterfly effect? Well, let's consider an actual butterfly, or more specifically, a caterpillar. Caterpillars are awesome. They have all those legs, and they're really cool. And there's an entire children's book series about how pretty they are. But if the caterpillar just chose to stay a caterpillar, if she decided that the chaos of metamorphosis would be too much for her to handle, she would never know what she could become. Do you think that changing her entire being isn't painful? Do you think it's not scary and hard and overwhelming? Of course it is. But if she didn't fight against the fear, if she didn't allow the change to turn into her true self, we would never know how beautiful she is. She would never know that she was meant to fly. So literally, basically, the exact idea that is uh, this part, um, hope for the flowers. And again, maybe Rachel took it from this other creator or whatever, and they're both just chalk full of no ideas but here's the quote that Heidi put on the screen during the event why do we want to do this because unless we become our full selves we can't do as much as we could be doing or as much as we're called to do for others okay so uh very similar very very similar um you know just the, the, the hits keep coming um, all right, so butterfly backwards hat, show up. Okay, they both had a fitness app, um, which apparently is now gone. Uh, as Heidi's show up app is now launching at some point um, to the app store, um, the now Rachel's Rise fitness app is exiting the app store. I clicked on her links on Instagram on her uh, link tree, it went to like, this page is no longer available. If you search it in the app store, I don't believe it shows up on Apple anymore. It might still show up on Google, but it looks like that's nixed as far as I can tell. Um, so they both had a fitness app. They both have live streams with Dave Hollis, our bestie at some point. Um, and as we remember from the episode, the last live stream, uh, Rachel, or sorry, Dave and Heidi were, you know, having morning coffee and doing live streams uh, inside of a group, inside of a group. Um, but look how similar. Like I use this in the thumbnail, but like, okay, this is at Rachel's and Dave's marital house. Okay, they're doing a live stream. This is from like last week. This is like in a different room of that house from like two years ago. <laughs> like Dave has changed quite a bit physically and he's got a new woman with him. But, like, we're just going to pretend that this is not weird. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's just a little fun, obviously. This, okay, the love you sign. Now, the two new ones that I, that's what I thought, like, we need to bring this up at some point. I think that's enough. I think that's a lot of good examples, if I do say so myself. They both say inside of, true, very true. They're inside of, they both use that terminology they both talk about manifesting there's so many like little examples that are like okay well every grifter uses those these days but these you know the inside of thing definitely is like unique to them i think and to unique to dave rachel and heidi um but here's two more so let's go to heidi's instagram from like literally today unless it was i have it on my phone but um i'm pretty sure it's still within the 24 hours excuse me Claire, 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 excuse me. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah, there's a lot of children content. My God, there's so much kid content that is not necessary on Heidi's page right now. We're not gonna watch that because I've seen enough. I know every detail about their children, all their old photos, where they go to school, what they're doing. Okay. <sighs> Mm. 
Okay, we're gonna I'm gonna put the comments here to kind of blur their faces. But basically, she's gonna say here that she just recently started to not eat gluten. I'm almost positive. I'm gonna play it again just to make sure I heard correctly. Okay. Oh. And he's looking at you. Oh, oh, hey, right. little buddy. Okay, go. Oh, oh man. man. Thanks, Jill. Ruby and Cash. Uh -huh. Ruby, you, you said you created a habit. Leave in nine minutes. You have to leave in nine minutes. Uh, Ruby and Cash created. Ruby, what did you call this? You created what? I created a habitat. Or, yeah, an okay, this part isn't important. Habitat. You also created a mess. Yes. You're about to create a yogurt parfait. Yes. <laughs> Before okay. I forget, I got a lot of people asking. This is what we've been setting out after school. Norris is packing oh. them for lunches right now. Okay. There's different flavors. This is Catalina what? Crunch. This is traditional mix. This tastes like that. I don't know. It tastes like the. It tastes like Chex Mix. That's what it tastes like. And then this. So are we almost out of all of it? This one, really freaking good. So here's what I love. These are all. They all have pretzels. Where's the other flavor? Spicy. We haven't had much of this. This is very spicy. Um, they're all keto friendly. So yeah, they have pretzels and like little bread kind of things. But they're actually not made with flour. They're made with pea protein. And so every serving has... It's, it's zero added... It's zero sugar. So zero sugar. And it has... Um, Again, gluten free, which is a big deal because I actually just started eating gluten free the other day. And then the little okay, kid right there. She okay. I'm glad because I was trying to sell, like doubt myself. I'm like, no, there's no way I got that right. I just the other day started going gluten free. Okay, that could be because she's in a competition, and just so happens the guy's telling her go gluten free. But we're gonna watch the interview with Lisa Bilyeu, and Rachel says for the first time that I've ever heard she's also going gluten free, and that came out first. So. Once again, <laughs> I feel like I'm on to something here. Um, <laughs> I'll show you the proof of that in just one second. Um, okay, uh, that's one thing. And then the other thing from Heidi, so keep that in mind, gluten-free, right? Gluten-free. Um, this one, okay. Now, trigger warning, talking about panic attacks, and this is something I can relate to very much. I haven't had a panic attack in years since I was in college, but I had panic attacks when I was a kid, like all the time from not eating gluten, <laughs> from having um, literally like psychological issues, you know, rightfully so. Um, so my, and my point of view is, and maybe I'm wrong. I, I'm no clinical psychologist. I'm not a doctor in any way. I'm not, a, you know, I have a therapist. That's my, my expertise, my level of understanding. I just think that, um, you know, usually there is something going on in someone's life to cause them stress, whether they're sensitive to stress or, you know, something in the family's going on. Usually there is a reason that you can look at psychologically where the psychological concern is coming from. So if you're having a panic attack, nine times out of 10, from my life experience, there's a reason why like that's going on. Like my family is doing something, I'm doing something. It's not like my hormones are off or my gluten is off. Now that's my perspective. I could be wrong, but you know, it looks like from viewing these people online, it looks like their life would give me panic attacks. Anyways. So for the first time ever, I hear both Heidi and Rachel essentially talk about panic attacks for the first time. Now, technically, Heidi did mention this in one of her videos, and we're going to also watch the part two. I haven't watched it yet of her like going to a fitness competition video that is on her YouTube. It's like more behind the scenes documentary style. It made me really sad the last one we watched. So of course... <laughs> Choose sadness. Let's watch the next version, the next iteration of it. Um, but in the first version, she she mentioned she had a panic attack. Um, so, you know, she did mention it before Rachel talked about her panic attack in this interview. We're going to watch with Lisa Bilyeu. But it's just weird that like the timing is just so close. Um, okay, here we go. On July thirty first, so that's not too too long ago. 
I was sure I was dying. Heart palpitations, uncontrollable breathing, numbness from my head to my clenched hands, fighting every single second of my three hour experience to just stay conscious. I've never been more certain this was it. My first ever panic attack was a thing I'll never forget. Sounds dramatic, but if you've been there, you know. Oh, I mean, yeah, I've never had a three hour panic attack to be fair, but I mean, they're horrible. Like, awful hate it that's like I tell my therapist all the time I'm like that's my biggest fear in life is having another one at any point that's my you know my least don't want to do that (laughs) ever again um at the time I couldn't appreciate the way I can now the way God steps in to help us take stock of what's unsustainable in our lives the times we get so excited about the way we believe our work is finally serving people the way it was meant to without having the wherewithal to ask if it's serving us and the people we love most. Yeah, that's toxic. <laughs> okay. I don't think you have a panic attack and this is my own, you know, experience once again. I don't I don't find that God, never first of all, there's a lot to unpack with what God is, but I don't think God wants you to pay attention to your products aren't serving you enough. <laughs> I don't know. Like, doesn't God have bigger things to worry about than if Heidi Powell's 60 day booty squirrel challenge is actually beneficial to her? But you know, I digress. Uh, at the time I couldn't appreciate the way I can. Oh wait. Okay. I did that. I'm reading it already. I love the work I get to do so much. And also I've been slowing it down a lot over the last six weeks. How so? You've done a live stream every five days. You've done two hour live streams every day. You've traveled to go to Austin with all of your kids and said how stressful it was. And you were pushing so hard to sell, 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 sell. You had a five day boot camp where you went live five days in a row there, traveled to Utah to do these videos that are like mysterious. You announced a new app coming up. What have you slowed down? (laughs) I need, (laughs) I need an explanation. Um, actually it just, I just want to, you know, bring this very serious comment up. Um, God is gluten-free. Um, that is in the Bible. It's in celiac, um, one nine. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know how the Bible works. It's in genetic six, genetic six diet plan, um, new revelations. Uh, okay. I love the work. I did. Wait, I love the work I get to do so much. And also I've been slowing down a lot. Why? Because the pull into this work came at a cost to my mental health, my kids, my most cherished relationships, which I'm assuming that's Dave. I'm assuming, um, balancing the life changing work I get to do with running a full blown business. Wait, balancing the life changing work I get to do with running a full blown business. Okay. And it's moving parts has made it harder to connect to my people, my peace and my joy. So these last six weeks have been an unexpected invitation to reset and redirect my focus on one day, one hour, one minute, one second at a time. So, okay, once again, like I haven't reached the end of this, but like she's saying that she has slowed down the last six weeks, which no, zero evidence just to show that that's true. But not only has she slowed down in the the last six weeks, it's also caused her to have a panic attack. Okay. And it's also (laughs) this picture, like, hey guys, I had a panic attack. Here's me posing in my Tesla, I'm assuming, based on the the moon roof panic attacks are really hard guys i love you ring for you like okay anyways anxiety is an interesting thing even typing it here makes me cry slightly embarrassed actually shame that i'm not strong enough to tough it out stupidity for not even knowing it was there okay that sounds unfair to everyone who has anxiety continue. I didn't even recognize the signs, just filed it away as what comes with this new hustle. Yeah, that hustle is a good word for that. But once you know, you know, you can't unknow, unfortunately, unfortunately. Okay. Unfortunate only because I have to fight the voice in my head that tells me lies that this recognition means I'm broken. Who's saying that? Fortunate because I believe my anxiety and overwhelm was trying to tell me something valuable, letting me know that the way it was, wasn't working. And she also flew to LA too, to take Dave to a, like a front row football game for fucking no reason. Like 
just to be a good friend, good best friend. Like again, like in the first week of her challenge, this all seems, I mean, I'm sure she had a panic attack. I'm sure she has anxiety, but like I, it, she didn't slow down from what I can tell. And it's like, so what are, what are you doing to fix it? Are you going to therapy? Are you figuring it out? Or you're just saying you've already slowed down. So it's like, I'm confused anyways. Or she's saying she slowed down later because it, I don't know, whatever. Okay, I could either keep roughing it out and pushing through, which I know could be a crash course back into the most terrifying experience, or I could accept that those panic attacks and ER visits, so that's sort of visits to the ER, that's okay. Here, here, here's my soapbox once again. Uh, why are you secretly? She records everything about her life, right? Everything. I know all of her kids' ages, like I said, schools, hobbies, what they look like w- w- without, you know, the boys without shirts on. Like, there's so much content about her children out there. It's ridiculous. I know what area she lives in, what house she's in. Like she shares all of this. This is nothing of me like investigating it. This is stuff that she posts on a regular basis. So, okay. But you're going to the ER multiple times apparently. And you just decide to shut the camera off for that. Like, okay, that's fine. You don't have to share everything, but it just seems disingenuous that you try to make it seem like I'm so authentic. I show everything, but then actually something going on, you like turn it off or you post old stuff to make it look like something's not going on. But then later on, you're like, I went to the ER. It's like, well, I would have seen that because you were, you know, posting constantly. So it's like, okay, if you took a break, like, again, I'm not saying she has to post anything, but it just seems like weird that you call yourself a person who shares everything but then when it's like a negative thing that you perceive as a weakness we don't see that so again this as they said in the financial diet uh podcast that um featured rachel hollis it's that manufactured authenticity it's authentic to the to a level to a point in which it's socially acceptable as soon as it crosses over then we don't see anything or then it's curated and it's like ignored and i really hate that because you'll it's a way to draw people in like i'm so vulnerable tell me all your deepest secrets take your mask off she said this come to the group and take your mask off and be who you are it's like okay but you're not doing that you're not sharing your panic in real time you know not that i want to see that but at the same time it's like who are you? You know, you, you decide what you share. And it's, so it's like, it is manufactured. Angela Arnold says something's indeed fishy dot, dot, dot. And thank you for that amount. 18 stinking dollars. I really appreciate it for real. It is 18 American dollars. How much? 18 stinking dollars. And this is very on topic for, for this point. Dave, take it away. Turns out you can have a full life without putting it all on social media. Agreed, but apparently it can't. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it, Angela. But yeah, but going back to this, it's like, okay, so where, when was this? Like, I'm trying to figure out in the, in the timeline, like, okay, she, she, you know, takes a couple days here and there, like it takes a few hours off of Instagram, but the rest of the time it's like post, 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 post you know, to the point of like a hundred a day um, of her kids and of what she's doing. So, okay. So multiple ER visits. I'm surprised by that. It's way of, it's God's way of lifting the hood, showing me things my busy self couldn't see. Okay, continue in comments. And another thing, like, she does, from what it seems like, she does read a lot of hate comments, whether it's on her own, you know, DMs, whether it's on Reddit, I don't know. She seems to respond a lot to the haters, haters in quotes. So they would have told you, (laughs) your life seems completely chaotic and messy and overwhelming. So you don't listen to them, but God is telling you exactly the same thing. And it's like, oh, thank God he's told me. It's like, well, a lot of people who you claim are hating on you have also told you the same thing. It's just interesting how you listen to, you know, more than humans watching you. Humans. All right, we got more. Sorry. Opening my eyes to the possibility of and need for a better way, creating awareness that in order to step into my next phase of purpose... 
I'm meant for, oh God, did Dave write this? Change is necessary. So here I am doing the inventory that might realign me, making sure my why and my goals are in order. Course correction isn't a bad thing, you guys. As much as it's been frustrating and scary, it's also been the most beautiful thing. Something that requires a really scary leap of faith. What if, I hate, 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 hate. When influencers are so fucking vague you can't comprehend what they're talking about like what are you changing give me like a like an example and a, a, a crumb of an example of what this could mean for your life because right now I see you with Dave still I mean not today necessarily but you're with Dave every five seconds okay that's not changed you still live in the same place that's not changed um, you're still doing a, a 60 day challenge that's not changed you're still posting your kids online that's not changed you're still online that's not changed what's different What's changed? You're just not going to, you're doing a fitness competition for God's sakes. That's not changed. So what's different? Give me an, give me something. Apparently not. Okay. So I'm grateful. Thank you, anxiety. Okay. Thank you, anxiety. Thank you for nothing. That's what I would say in my post. Thanks for nothing. So I'm grateful. Of course you are. Thank you, anxiety, for showing me what I needed to see, for slowing me down when I wouldn't slow down myself. Thank you for forcing quiet back into my life and reconnecting with me, reconnecting me with my intuition. Time to empty my jar, pull out all the rocks, dump out all the sand, then refill my jar with big rocks first, then little sand second, fitting perfectly in between it all. Okay, whatever. And of course, first... (laughs) Then someone's like, huh? I'm confused. Are you quitting the challenge? (laughs) Guess not. Well, actually, did she respond? Let's see. She did respond. She responds, no, no. I spent a, I spent a last, okay. No, no. I spent a, the last couple months removing things from my life that were not serving me and my family and my goals and only keeping space for what was, was such an eye opener. The challenge is in full swing and better than ever. (laughs) I believe because God stepped in and helped me clear. Oh, I got to play it. They helped her clear it. Uh, Clear, clear, clear. Uh, The things that needed clearing. As for 2023, I'm not sure what it looks like, to be honest. I'm focusing on what's in front of me, what is now, and it's beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, again, like what's changed? I've removed things. What have you removed? I'm not going to specify. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Heidi. Of course, Dave says, I've never seen someone be as strong as you were that night. What night? I thought this was multiple ER visits, multiple ER visits in the same night. And so you were there too, Dave? What the hell? I'm certain the deconstruction underway will open up so much good for you it's just around the corner love you Heidi Hart deconstruction from what (laughs) religion it doesn't seem like she's giving up religion uh because she mentioned God about seven times in there um just curious uh can we speak in more like like again why do I know what cheerleading outfit your daughter wears but I don't know anything about what you're talking about here (laughs) Can we get a little bit more specifics? Because I can't, I can't learn. I can't grow. I can't become a butterfly if I don't have specifics, Heidi and Dave. <sighs> Yikes. Um, panic attacks suck. Not going to lie. Again, like I have sympathy, but, but, but as someone who has had panic attacks and is, it fears having them again, this post is making me feel more anxious, to be honest. Like, and I'm not thanking my anxiety for showing me that it's like obvious like hey you know if you're really stressed out all the time you're gonna probably have more anxiety than if you were more calm I don't need to read a fucking self-help book to know that (laughs) just 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 saying anyways that's Heidi um but it just it's really interesting that she came out with this information uh oops uh what day was this one day ago when hi or when Rachel spoke pretty much in the same stark terms about her panic attack. Now they're both in denial, in my opinion, about what could be possibly causing them stress and anxiety. Uh, they don't handle it. I don't, I see no medication mentioned like, Hey, I'm considering going on medication to handle these things. That's the only thing that really helped me get through panic attacks was, you know, medical 
intervention helped me tremendously. Uh, I'm not seeing that from either one of them. And it's sort of disappointing. There's no therapy being talked about in this page. You know, at least this thing, it's just like very vague. Again, like I'm going to put myself first and do this. And I'm going to show up for the heart. And God showed me the under the hood. It's like none of this means anything to me. Um, Okay, so on the docket, we have Heidi's uh, second video about her workout routine Rachel's Lisa Bilyeu podcast um, highlights. Thank you, Lisa. Welcome. Woo! Hold on. Let me play the bicycle horn. <laughs> yay, yay! Welcome. Um, and uh, but first, but first, but also, I think we should uh, address Rage Talk Live because there's a couple things hot off the presses with with what's going on there. So uh, we're gonna jump around a little bit, and we're gonna keep it in the Hollis family today because there is so much. Um, You wouldn't think so. (laughs) You wouldn't think that within a week there would be so many updates, but we live in a society. Um, Okay, so (laughs) today, uh, if you didn't know, it's already taken off the website, so you can't even see that there was a live class that was available, Um, but there was a live class available as part of the Rachel Hollis live tour. And now if you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, this is Rachel Hollis's live event. The only in-person event of the year, the only event that has ever happened, not even just with Rachel, like of the whole year. It's the only event to go to. Uh, oh, thank you, Darby DeFord. I appreciate it. Uh, Darby says, Gonna have to catch the replay tomorrow because of the first round of med school exams coming up, but wanted to contribute to the live. Please feel free to unfollow me. Darby, you need to leave. Unfollow me. You need to leave. However, before you go... I will actually do something obscene for you. And um, that is... I don't have to go do a potty. Dave not having to do a potty, but also... Not your poop again. Not your poop again. And one final thing. Dave, you're talking about peace, aren't you? No, I'm talking about buying my book. Talking about getting off and going to study for med school exams. Rooting for you, girly, Darby. Good luck, for real. But also... Unfollow me. (laughs) Just kidding. If you can't commit to being serious about this live stream, then just leave. Med school, pff, who needs it? I just believe, and I my medicine believing is my medicine. <laughs> believing in myself. Okay, um, so if you remember uh, up here, there was like live class. There was that little link next to the Rachel Hollis live tour, like button near the Instagram button. Um, that's gone because the event was today. And guess who got to go? However, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I feel really dumb, and I probably would have had more tea if I would have been there on time but it was like 11 o'clock central cst time and i swear to god i looked it up last night and it's two hours different than my time which is eastern standard but apparently it's only one hour so i showed up an hour late like a dummy like a dummy as soon as there's like a difference in time zone i zone out apparently so most people won't get up at 4 a.m most people won't get up at 4 a.m i also won't (laughs) <laughs> enter the live uh, at the right time but I did go to the live I was there late I got there an hour late um and there was 122 people at the max when I was there now they could have come in and left because it was it was you know an hour plus class um about confidence but yeah not thousands of people like she's claimed um, it was a hun- not 200. It was, it was 122, I believe was the most. And it went down from there. Um, so sort of low numbers, which would match the low numbers that are seemingly still a part of this tour. Now I haven't looked in a little bit, but here is th- now this venue has changed. It was a bigger venue. It got downsized. Um, there's still tickets available. So all the gray is sold. All the orange is unsold VIP and all the blue is available regular. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. (sighs) 
Um, okay, so, but this is the first one coming up. Like, this is coming up on f- next Friday night at 7. Um, there's going to be a lot of empty seats. Uh, Charleston. <laughs> oh, shit. Wait. Oh, no. We figured this out last time. Um, Charleston is still going on, but they switched venues. So now the Ticketmaster doesn't work. So that's good. That's good for sales. Uh, Joliet. Here we go. I'm just going through these quickly just to see where we're at with them. This one, yeah, this one's got a lot, a lot more to to go to sell out or to get close to being full. Uh, But, you know, they got time. This August, or sorry, October 6th for that one. So technically, I mean, people could all of a sudden show up. Show up, huh? Get it? This one, I think all of the gray on the corners in the back have been closed. So still a lot of seats there for Chesterfield. Here's Kansas City. I mean, yeah, uh, not so much. Um, I will not say whether I'm going to the show or not. It will keep it a mystery in all of your eyes. (laughs) And I don't want to get anyone um, from their team I don't want to lead them on to knowing anything about me going to anything. So I'll just keep it vague, like Heidi's anxiety post. <laughs> I'll do the very thing I hate, keeping things vague. Um, but I don't want to cause any problems. And I do want to go and experience it as an actual guest. And I don't want to cause a scene or get kicked out or anything. So I'm not going to say whether I'm going to go or not, where I'm going to go, just going to keep it on the DL until it's after it's done, which I'm sort of giving it away already, but um, you'll know (laughs) when it's time to know. Um, But, okay, let's just go through the list one more time. Oh yeah, wait, you can't see Detroit. They blocked that. So Charleston and Detroit, I can't see right now because the link doesn't work for Charleston. And this is the last one of the night, This or of the tour. This is the Cincinnati, Ohio, and there was Columbus, which was canceled due to lack of ticket sales. And the other Ohio doesn't seem to be like, oh, everyone's now going there, so it seems. Um, But she did address, Rachel did address that some cities, because there was, Columbus was on the list. Um, What was the other one? Now I forget. It was like Nebraska, and there was like some other one. It's It's been a long month. I don't know. There was like four other cities that got cut from the list um, and they're gone because there wasn't ticket sales. Now I'm shocked that somewhere like Joliet could still, ex- Jul- Juliet could still exist while the other ones were canceled, but um, she did address it. So I will give her 0.1% props for addressing it. However, there's like 20 things that she said that were just not accurate that bothered me. Um, and because I'm not a nice person, I'm not going to give her the big benefit of the doubt. Oh yeah. Omaha, Nebraska, Indianapolis and Wichita. Yeah. Um, those are the ones. Thank you guys. (laughs) Guys got better memories than me. Um, okay. So she addressed it in a, in a podcast. So we're not gonna listen to the whole podcast because the beginning was kind of boring. Um, but the part where she brings up now someone allegedly asked her the question like about tickets go disappearing cities disappearing on the tour because she did not address it she just like took them off redid the website took off the cities and people got an email and said it's been canceled um so she does address it now we're gonna go through like line by line and poke holes in her explanation your podcast uh okay wait I'm going to raise this up because I've been watching back some of the, my videos and it's like off. So let me know if it's right, if it's better audio balanced. Cause I'm, I feel really bad that it's all crazy sounding. So let me know. Okay. See, this one says, okay. She has a question about tour. Hey Rachel, I just noticed that you are not touring in Columbus. So I was just curious as to if you're okay and um if you're going to be at anywhere close to there i was really looking forward to it i listen to you pretty much every day and uh yeah so if you have the opportunity to let other people know on your podcast uh what happened 
I would really just like to know um, what happened, I guess. And I hope that you're okay. All right, thanks. Bye. Okay, so just in case, I turned it up. So hopefully it's all good. She's like, oh, you're not going to Columbus anymore. Just wanted to make sure you're okay. What happened? Just want to know you're okay. Still too quiet? Okay, did it get better? Dang it. Too quiet. Okay. I, I have it maxed out. Maybe I should shut myself up. <laughs> better. Okay. <laughs> Let me know. Oh my gosh. First of all, love that. I literally, I probably should call her name is Erica. I probably should call her and like freak her out and be like, hey, it's Rach. Um, thank you for the question. Freak her out. Starting off with a banger. Uh it sounds like, yeah, like, oh, I'm gonna call her and she's gonna be so impressed with my fame that she'll freak out. It's like I think people don't really care as much, but okay. Yeah, there were a couple. Yeah, everyone said that it sounds like her. You want to listen to it again? Just like, just to. We're looking forward to that. I listen to you pretty much every day. And uh, yeah, so if you have the opportunity to. But, uh, it's like they say um, on TikTok right now. They're like, if you slow down a Nicki Minaj song, it sounds like Jay-Z. And if you slow down an Adele song, it sounds like Sam Smith. And it's like, if you speed up this recording, it sounds like Rach. People know on your podcast. Uh, what happened? I would really just like to know um, what happened, I guess. And I hope that you're okay. All right, thanks. Bye. Oh my gosh. First of all, love that. I literally, I probably should call her name is Erica. I probably should call her and like freak her out and be like, Hey, it's Rach. Um, thank you for Erica. the question. Yeah. There were a couple cities that came off the tour schedule and it's nothing to worry about. So <laughs> weird that's a weird way to, to handle this situation it's nothing to worry about okay I don't think she's worried about you I mean she said it in the thing I'm are you okay I think she Erica meant to say like are you okay something happened like are you all right your ego busted maybe I don't know who knows but like nothing to worry about like no one was worried I think it's just like okay what do you think about it <laughs> why aren't you talking about it First, I will answer Erica specifically and say she said she was in Columbus. Um, so I hope, Erica, you'll come to the Cincinnati show. So there are actually two in Ohio. And I know it's not in the exact same place, but it is in the same state. So maybe you roll over and hang out with me there. And I believe Cincinnati's our last night. So I feel like that's going to be the most epic. Like it'll be this big build up to that last night. So hopefully you can come hang out with us there. But yeah, the, it's not it's not controversial or dramatic. It was like a little bit of a bummer. But this whole tour is an experiment. Who, who would have thought it was controversial? <laughs> it wasn't like, <laughs> I don't know. Like controversial would have been like they – you know, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio had a riot because Rachel Hollis was coming to town because of her, you know, misappropriating quotes from Maya Angelou and they people burned down the city and that's why they canceled. Like, OK, that's one thing that's controversial. Like we all kind of figured that no one was going to buy these tickets. And it was more shocking that anyone was still interested unironically going so this is sort of fitting the narrative that i've seen from my vantage point of like a hater so this is why it's like oh like have you connected to that rachel like that's i think the what people are wanting to know um so no one thinks it's controversial i've never done it before we're going to cities that are not known for personal development i think i've said this pretty publicly that you know it was intentional if I had gone to Miami, LA, Manhattan, like there are places I could go that I know would be a bigger draw. Uh, just, you know. No, <laughs> this, this, I was listening to this and like, first of all, she's been to Charleston before and had like a full, like sold out conference with thousands of people, if I'm not mistaken. So that's why I think she went back there. So if you, that, that city specifically that is still on the list, which is Charleston, South Carolina, was a big success for her. So the other cities too, and someone pointed this out on Reddit, and I'm like, great point. When she was talking to Tony Robbins, you know, this year, he, he asked her a question or she said, well, my target audience is a soccer mom from Ohio. So you literally pick two locations in Ohio, which would match your 
version of who your target audience is, who you're speaking to, the woman that you write all your books to, the person that you're talking to in your podcast when you pretend that we're best friends and you say, love you, rooting for you, who you're thinking of is a soccer mom in the, the state that you literally just closed down a city to go live in. That's where the disconnect is for me. It's like, don't gaslight us into thinking this is all because I made it this way. Bullshit. You're failing and that's okay. It's okay to fail, but don't tell me you're not failing and oh, it's just an experiment and whatever. And I will give her credit because she's going to go and say like, you have to try shit. You got to go for it. You got to like be okay with being embarrassed. And I agree. I think that's a good point. I think that's what she really does bring to the table and we're going to watch the interview, but like Lisa's like, you're resilient. And I don't disagree. She is resilient in the sense of she's still here. She's still making content. I would have been gone a year, two years ago. I'd have been out. As soon as Dave and I broke up, gone. Like you would never see me again. I would take the money that I made and disappear. And that would have been it. So the fact that she's continuing to try, I will give her credit. Do I think it's an overt positive, net positive for the world and for her mental health and her children? Absolutely not. I don't think she's really making anything better for herself by sticking around, but that is resilience. So, hey, if you want to live your life like that, go for it. Who am I to say anything different? But she never went to Miami. She's never done LA. She's never done Manhattan for a fucking good reason. She came to Fort Myers when she came to Florida instead of Miami when she did Rise Conference for a reason. You have a target audience. That's the pockets in which they live. There was research done. Don't bullshit me and go, and she's gonna say, I don't know if she says it in this or before, it's like God or like the universe called me into these specific cities. Okay, so she also says she's guided all the time. So if she was called and guided to go to Columbus by her spirit guides. My guardian angels, my spirit guides. Like, why would they lead you astray and then you have to shut it down. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like her whole philosophy on life is like, I'm guided. And if I just listen, I will be like, you know, abundantly, whatever, like rewarded because I'm perfect and I'm the best and God chose me better than you. You know, that's the vibe I get from not just her. A lot of people say that. But, you know, why would he guide you or she or they, whatever, guide you to make pick a choice of a city that's not selling it doesn't make sense then 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 it goes well you got to experiment okay well that's a different life philosophy than like listen to your instincts and they'll never lead you astray it's like (sighs) bullshit bullshit because if again she's no dummy if Miami was the place to be she'd be in Miami but you know I I don't know one fucking personal development thing that's that doesn't happen in Ohio (laughs) anyways okay going back People there maybe have gone to something like this before and would want to come see. And in this instance, we were trying out cities to see if there was nibbles there. And some cities, it just wasn't as popular. And people were like, oh, my, you know, what? Are, and I was like, oh, it's okay. It's not a big, you know, I think probably those, the incredible team that has been working on tour with me, I think that they probably were worried about my ego and like, oh, what are you going to do? And I'm like, oh, I still can't believe that literally one person wants to pay to hear me speak for real. Like, okay, then why did you make a business decision to go to all these cities? Why wouldn't you just like do a coffee shop? Why would you buy a venue with 1500 seats? Like that doesn't make sense either. Like your actions and your words are not matching. If you are so shocked that one person will buy a ticket, why don't you do a one-on-one like sit down in Austin? Like it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's not real. Like she really thought like, okay, people are going to like me again because I've talked about certain issues in my life and that, that people have connected with that. People now think Dave's an asshole because I've like been dropping little hints that he's an asshole and look at him doing pancake gate. Okay. They're going to come back to my team now and like, I'll be fine. And you know, hasn't happened. I have never lost that version of me that, I mean, I learned to be a keynote speaker. No bullshit. I learned to be a keynote speaker she said nibbles <laughs> not to be confused with nipples she's like we, we have to see if there's nibbles there in ohio no nibbles allowed in ohio or nipples either 
by volunteering at senior citizens' homes, by talking at the local library. Like, I would go speak at the opening of an envelope. I would go to anything because I was just trying to work on how to be a better speaker. I can very easily tap into what it feels like to not have anybody know your name and not have anybody care what you were saying. So the fact that thousands of you have bought tickets to tour is like, my heart's exploding. Thousands of you have bought tickets? Where? Thousands? That would make more than 1,000, correct? We just looked at the list. There's not thousands of tickets sold, unless I cannot count correctly. (laughs) There's seven cities, maybe a hundred, maybe. I don't even think a hundred are sold in each city. I would be shocked to find out that there's a hundred sold in each city. Even so, that's 700. That's not, you'd have to double that amount, more than double that amount to say thousands. There's no fucking way. There's no way. She's lying. There's no way. I, I mean, I am not her, I'm not ticket master. I'm not ticket wizard. I don't know really. There could be some grand plan. I don't know. But from what it looks like from the, like maybe Detroit has sold 10,000 and they're just hiding it because they want me to look stupid. I don't know. I don't think that's what it is, but it's not true. Don't thousands of you. She said the same thing for rise in Austin. She's like thousands of you are online right now. There was like 200 of us. I'm like, there's 200 of us I can see right now. And there's 40 of you in person. Like this, that doesn't equate to thousands of people. Sorry. (sighs) Okay. Uh, Mary, Mary Dillpickle. What a name. I love it. Are you from the Rugrats universe? Um, (laughs) Mary says, reminder, everyone, Rach is not problematic. I am not problematic. And she has no regrets about that. I don't regret anything. There you go. And... She is also the best, goodest, good girl you ever met in your life. <laughs> See? Thank you, Mary. Ah, just like bothers me because it's like, the, uh, again, like, okay, she's, she's, I'm giving her a, like a 0.1%. Okay. She's coming out. She's addressing it, which, you know, it's like the, again, the bar is so low. Like the fact that you're selling tickets and then you close a city and then I expect like silence is, is saying something, you know, like, okay, what type of uh, authentic person you are or, you know, someone who's relatable, uh, you know, or not relatable, um, you know, closing down cities without even saying like, hey guys, sorry, you know, you didn't buy the tickets or whatever. Um, and then also she was saying in another podcast, she's like, Joliet and Detroit, you guys are like crazy buying tickets, like so crazy. You guys are going to like, whoever sells out first gets like a special bonus. There's, there's like not even a, not even a close, they'd have to be like a fire for people to run in there and buy a ticket, like some catastrophic event where like the only way to, you know, douse the flames would be to buy a ticket to this thing. But that's the only thing that's going to change. There's like, it's a very slow ticket buying process. The fact that she was like on her podcast saying like, they're competing for who's going to sell out first is bullshit too. So it's all marketing. It's all sales, but it's just not working anymore. All these tactics aren't working. (sighs) Anyways. Um, Oh, thank you. Hannah Bieber. Are you Justin Bieber's sister? Uh, Hannah Bieber says, this is my favorite part of the week. (laughs) Me yelling. I love being yelled at on my TV. It is 18 <laughs> American dollars. Thank you very, very, very much for that. 18 stinking dollars. And for that, you said, Hannah said this to me. I will slowly buy you a boat. By donating that. Thank you. Um, and just remember. I am all about getting a free ride. I am all about getting a free ride. And getting a free ticket to Rage Talk Live. Send me one. I'll critique it. (sighs) Anyways, okay. Thank you, Hannah. I appreciate that. Okay, back to it. And y'all know what's going on. You know the price of gas. You know inflation. You know all of these things. And just in the world that we're living in, as much as I would freaking love to show up, you know, for a few hundred people, just like I couldn't do that because – Okay, again, like, why can't you just fucking, like, for once, and I know I'm yelling and I'm cursing and I'm mad, but, like, 
it does feel this is like okay this is why i get so personal about this because it sounds like my mother me trying to talk to her and like get a point across and say okay you know you really hurt me this is why and then she'll my mom will say something like I understand why you're upset. You had a rough day at school. I'm like, no, it's not because I had a rough day at school. It's because you hurt my feelings. Why can't you hear me? I hear you. You're probably hungry. It's like, ah, no, that's not the reason. Just hear, like the reason is, and it's like, oh, you just can't, just ah, it bothers me. So when I hear someone like this, I'm like, all the reasons are crystal clear. They're published across the world. It's so fucking obvious why, you know, I don't want to be related about to you turned a lot of people off. Okay. It's obvious. Her and Dave sold marriage conferences. Then they got divorced. It's obvious why that would piss people off. The fact that she's sitting here saying gas and inflation. Okay, whatever. That's stupid. But then on top of it, I can't just come to a city with a couple hundred tickets sold. Girl, girl, count your ticket sales because the couple hundred ticket sales are in the cities that you have not taken off the list. And I don't even think there is multiple hundreds of those either. So what are you talking about? You're lying again, or someone's lying to you because you refuse to like use the internet for some weird reason. Like that's not, that's not the accurate picture of what it is. Like uh, uh, people are going to show up to this thing and go, Oh, I thought this is going to be packed. And like, you know, like she said, thousands of people are coming to this and there's 10, you know, there's 25, there's 50. Like I know why she's lying to make, to protect her ego, to, to hopefully sell more tickets, I guess. But like, it's just sort of embarrassing at this point. Like this is not the accurate picture that it's, it's not, it's like you're, the truth is there is over here and you're over here. Like, well, I can acknowledge one part of it, but I'm not going to acknowledge the whole thing. It just drives me insane. <sighs> Albanese, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Uh, it says, do you really think Rach actually believes the lies or is she going full grift mode? I think she's going full grift mode personally because she's not stupid. She's smart. She has access to, you know, if you're truly a CEO boss, babe, I mean, you can look at, tic I can look at Ticketmaster. I have no affiliation with her company whatsoever. And I can see the tickets that have not been sold. So the fact that she would like, if, even if she's so insulated to the point where she like doesn't go online and just has her team deliver the information, the team should be responsible to tell her the accurate data. So if that's not being delivered, like she should sue the company then because it's not an accurate picture from what I can see. So I think she's grift mode, totally, honestly. I think she cannot let her image be tarnished because she believes that the podcast is somehow separate from her life, that people don't know who she is on her podcast somehow. And that that's like, because it has a hundred million downloads is somehow keeping her alive in this like pristine condition or something, I don't know. But I, I, I don't think she is oblivious. And if she is, that's worse, to be honest, because then you can't be trusted to give advice to anyone. So thank you for that question, Albanese. I love you. That's from Dave, not from me. I, I like you being here, but I don't know you enough to love you. I'm sorry. I know that hurts. Scruffy cones. <laughs> okay. There's Colleen. <laughs> There's Colleen. Now we can move on. All right, let's go. In this instance, we have a partner in every city who helps us to put on the show. So there's like a local promoter in every city. And if they commit to something like that, it could be financially really harmful for them. Before I even comment on that <laughs> sentence, uh, thank you to M. Rahel Seifu, that's probably really not well pronounced. I'm very sorry. But they picked a pair character doing a classic mic drop. Thank you. It's okay to cry. I'm going to cry later. <laughs> Get this all out. Um, I appreciate it. Um, since we're talking about Rach. Rach? I will also mention, because this is going to be talked about at this online or not online in-person group my uterus um this is for you and last one she cleans the toilets there you go never forget hashtag never forget okay um so she's like so not only and this is the same thing that um heidi does as well comparing them to again heidi's like 
when she and Dave are doing their last thing about, we're not engaged, we're not engaged. Like, why would people think that? Meanwhile, they're sitting in front of two engagement balloons. Um, everyone keeps asking why we're engaged. I don't get it. Um, and she was like, I don't know why. I don't I don't get affected by people being negative. But I, I feel bad for other people who are affected by people being negative. It's like, oh, that's so convenient that you've never had feelings. Wow, like how must that be for you to not have feelings? And same with Rach, like she's fine. She doesn't have feelings. She doesn't get embarrassed. She doesn't care that her empire is crumbling to the ground. She doesn't care. She's all good. There's nothing controversial going on here. It's the partners in the cities that we picked that are going to be affected. That's why I took out the kindness of my heart to save them by canceling. Not because I'm going to lose money from my estate and from my, you know, Austin mansion boyfriend tour fund no 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 my Hawaii you know lifestyle I'm trying to whatever do no that's not nothing I don't do that I don't do that I care about our partners in all the cities it's like give me a fucking break I'm gonna go back and listen to that and like let it play and shut up for a second because it's like it's so crazy and I went back y'all know what's going on you know the price of gas you know inflation you know all of these things and just in the world that we're living in as much as I would freaking love to show up, you know, for a few hundred people, just like I couldn't do that. Because in this instance, we have a partner in every city who helps us to put on the show. So there's like a local promoter in every city. And if they commit to something like that, it could be financially really harmful for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about it. Like if they about it. put on a theater and turn on the lights and sell the tickets and do whatever and not enough people show up, they could lose money. And this is just post COVID. But I don't know how any of this works, but I would assume that you rent out the venue. So like, what do they care if no one shows up? If you want to rent out a venue and you're willing to pay the price for it, like, I don't think anyone cares. I don't think the theater necessarily usually gets a cut of like, oh, we have to sell these tickets. Like we're taking a risk on Rach. Like usually Rach is taking the risk on herself, right? Am I wrong? Is anyone in event planning that like deals with this stuff? Because like, I feel like, I've gone to events before or I've worked with venues before when I worked as a manager and it was like, they could care less who showed up. I had to pay for the, you know, the corporation had to pay for the venue no matter what. So like, they're like, oh, you you and your boyfriend want to come and like dance on stage? Cool. <laughs> I don't care. Just pay us the money. You will p- turn the lights on for you. Like, do you need an audio guy? No? Okay, good. Cool. Enjoy. Like, that's my understanding. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Um, oh, give me one second. I need to copy something over because I accidentally deleted it. Okay. Just so my, okay, got it. Never mind. Okay, continue. Not an environment where I want to do that, especially in small towns. So, um, yeah, there were a few cities where it just wasn't working. And, and so we had to let those go. And I prayed about it a lot. And I just was like, all right, you know, universe, God, i I believe that there's a plan. And so I'm going to show up super hard and pumped and with my heart so full because there were cities that were really into it. And yeah, no worries. I really appreciate that you're, you were nervous about me. I'm great. I just am trying to, you know what it is? Like one of my things in life too, is I realize that I have, I have been very successful (laughs) as a salmon swimming upstream. It's just the name of my game. And and she's reminding us that she's been very successful. My hair, God, I'm so sorry, everybody. She's been very successful. It's like, all right, we know. Can you do it now, though? Like, could you show how successful you are today? Like, you were successful in 2018, but, like, that was a one-time deal. Can you prove that you are a long-term, non-one-hit wonder boss babe? And I have been unconvinced of that thus far. Maybe it's why I can do this work and maybe it's why, you know, I'm about to go on tour and talk to thousands of you about naming your goal and believe. There's not thousands. There's not thousands. Where? Where's the thousands? All in Detroit? Because that's the one I can't see. Give me a break. There's not thousands. That would be too. If there's 2000 people going to this tour, I would be shocked, utterly shocked. I could be wrong. Obviously, I don't know the inner workings of any of this, but from just Ticketmaster, it doesn't look like there's thousands of tickets sold. So the fact that she's saying that just like, and putting it in there, like subliminally putting it in there, it's weird to me. 
investing in yourself and here's how you, the roadmap and whatever. Cause like, if I can navigate the world that I've navigated constantly pushing against resistance and constantly overcoming obstacles, well, damn, imagine what it would feel like if you actually went with the flow. So as I get closer what? and closer to 40, one of my prayers, one of the things I'm meditating on most is like, I really want to be guided. I have felt like since this idea first popped into my heart, I remember so distinctly a year ago sitting at my dining room table and it just was like someone shot an arrow into my brain. I was like, a tour? What if we like went to cities? What if it has nothing to do with the fact that my boyfriend is a tour manager and you know I have a weird obsession with competing with my significant others because as soon as Dave, my ex-husband, who is horrible to me and I hate him, um, as soon as he wanted to run a half marathon, I instantly also wanted to run a half marathon and uh, he was, you know, in the entertainment industry. So I became a uh, event planner in the entertainment industry. It's like, we know you have an issue where there's a competition thing between you and whoever you're with. And it just so happens that the man you're with now is a tour manager and you want to prove yourself to him to show that you're just as good as him uh, for whatever reason that's important. Okay, that's what it seems like is more reasonable and realistic. Not that you just were sitting at your kitchen table and God came into the room and said tour in Columbus. And then six months later or a year later, you had to cancel the tour because you know, God was wrong. It's like, what? There's so many holes to poke in this. It's like, at least if you're going to lie, lie better. We, I got a son and I got Jack and I got the team and we just like, we're joyful and fun. And we talked about hard things and good things and encourage people to meet each other and build masterminds and make connections. Like, what if we did that? And I just have been steadily taking one step in front of the other to get to where we are today. And yeah, it, when a few of the cities didn't work, it was literally guys that was just like that simple. I was like, okay, God, I'm just, I'm not going to force this upstream. I'm going to make a decision and that hopefully is what's best for everybody involved, not just myself or my ego. So yes, Erica, I'm great. And uh, there still are a lot of cities that you can come see us. And I promise it's going to be an incredible time. And I had a dream. I literally, before I would prepare for RISE conferences, I would, you know, you you have crazy dreams when you have big stuff, like if it's a wedding or, you know, I don't know, big presentations coming up at work. You have these like wild dreams. And I had the wildest dream last night and it was also so beautiful. So my dream go was on. that we were on tour and everything that could go wrong did. Like nobody knew how to turn the lights on and we couldn't find our merch. And at one point I literally, people came in and kidnapped me. I was kidnapped. I had to be ransomed back to the tour. It was like so hilarious, all of the things that went wrong in my dream. But the overwhelming theme in my dream was that we were all having so much fun. And I had a team meeting today with, with the crew. We're all talking about, you know, you know, tours a few weeks away and like, what do we need to do and who's going to be where and what do we still need to figure out? And I was like, you guys, I just, I'm so blessed that this was the dream because this is my dream. My dream. She'd be like, um, we need to get paid um, because these cities, you're, you're telling people thousands have participated. It's only been, you know, 27 people who bought tickets. Um, you know, the merch ain't going to cut it. I'll show you the merch in a second. Um, that was announced today or shown today, which, yikes. Uh, thank you, Kimberly Cosse. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kimberly says she figured enough time passed to try and rebuild a new audience. People didn't forget how unrelatable you are, Rach. Hell yeah. I want to be relatable. Who, what is it about me that made you think I want to be relatable? No, sis. I'm like, okay, I can't get over it. I'm still not over it. I want to be over it. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm a fucking bitter bitch, Rach. Rach? <laughs> I will never get over toilet gate for as long as I live. Uh, but <laughs> thank you. She cleans the toilets. I also want to 
talk about this and maybe today's the day maybe i should just do a, a super cut of all this stuff because um this brings up a good point about the about the un, you know toilet gate i thought and it's been presented to me at least toilet gate was a off the cuff thing and maybe we'll do a separate thing but i'll, I'll preview i'll tease it here what if toilet gate was not off the cuff and caused fully by that one live stream interaction. What if it was pre-written, essentially? It was being talked about months before and, or at least like, the idea of the cleaning lady who's so sweet and that she was going to get off social and social's a toxic place and cancel culture, da, 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 da. What if that was, there was evidence that that was already a plan? Would you change your mind about Toilet Gate? Just let me know. I'll leave it at that and then we'll cover it soon. Because there has come up some evidence that I've seen with my own eyes, my own ears, that is like shocking <laughs> to me. That like the detail in which certain things were mentioned and certain words were mentioned. I was like, this happened in February and Toilet Gate happened in April. Was this supposed to be some sort of plan that fucking failed completely? I'll leave you with that. Okay, going back to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> is that me, Jack, Kate, like my big sister's coming. Like I've, I've just like the whole, the volunteers who volunteered to show up and help us love on our guests. Those of you who've bought tickets, like we're about to have so much fun. We're going to do good things. We're going to dream big dreams. We're going to be inspired. We're gonna, our hearts hopefully lit up and turned on and the whole thing. But we are going to laugh. I hope that you laugh until you pee your pants a little bit. I hope that you get reconnected. Like, we're about to have fun. I've never heard anyone talk about peeing their pants ever as much as Rachel Hollis. We're, we're going to have so much coffee. We're going to have... So coffee? I was promised cocktails and champagne. Now we're having coffee. Again, the tables have turned once again. The turntables have turned. Uh, into now we're having coffee and we're developing our personalities as opposed to just having a laugh and drinking some bevies. When he laughs and yeah, Erica, everything is great. Thank you for asking. You know, I wanted to tell this story too, and I'm glad you set it up so that I could. I was going to talk about this at tour, but this is also <laughs> part of being a dreamer. This is part of the process of working toward a goal. And people are terrified of the exact thing that would help them figure out what it is they need to do. The exact thing that you need to do is experiment. Okay. And I don't disagree with what she's saying here. Um, it kind of goes off into her, like, you know, like someone said in the chat a second ago, like her evangelical pastor moment where she's like, you know, this brings me to the, the biggest point of today. You know, this is what being a dreamer is and making mistakes and being failing in public and blah, 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 you know, okay. So we can sort of wrap it up there. That's the tea. She, you know, she sold thousands of tickets to everyone in the world and everyone's, she's great and there's no problems and she never feels embarrassed because she is Rachel and she's, you know, overcome everything. Um, okay, so I, I teased a bunch of stuff there. Uh, and I won't leave you hanging. I'll, I'll grab it and we'll, we'll go into it. But I first, but first, um, I want to show you the merch. Now, this might not be the full merch, but if you remember, there was a podcast where she talked about she's like working with this artisan group or one artisan in Hawaii. And they made this special, like limited edition merch for tour. Tour. Not the tour, not her tour, tour. Um, and because she hasn't talked about it in a while, but she, she was going through this thing or is still possibly only buying used clothes, like thrifted clothes, that she didn't want to make new stuff. So she bought a bunch or somebody bought a bunch of like army jackets. I, again, this is what I wear on a daily basis. I have no fashion sense, so don't take my two cents on this, you know, thing. But um, she apparently is 
upthrifting, upcycling some old army jackets. So they're not new. So she didn't like go to the factory and make these. So an artisan made these jackets that you can buy. I think they're hideous, <laughs> but that doesn't mean they are. I just don't like them. I think it looks like when I would make a like a shirt for homecoming when I was in high school and I was like, go team. And I had stencils and I would just like, you know, bingo card, like how like the bingo stamps with paint and you fill in the stencil. Like that's what I think these look like, but I'll let you uh, be the judge. Okay, so let me go full screen, hold on. Um, I'll be you, full screen. Now this is taken, this is from today, the Zoom call, they were announced. This is what it is. I heart you and I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting, rooting for you. Now this is, I believe, I don't know who this is actually. This is someone from the side. However, a little T maybe the person. So in the zoom call, the person who was controlling the chat was named Kate, I believe Kate Neely, which is Rachel's maiden name. So I'm assuming that person that was working with her is a relative. Now that to me means that she's got, she had Jack, 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 um, in the room. And she had this person, I believe her name is Kate. And, but the last name was Neely, which is her maiden name. So it, it, it looks like Jack is, a, you know, a ride or die. And then now she's got family. This is not the team that she once had. Just once again, more proof that the team is gone, essentially. Um, root, rooting. My boo thing. Boo thing. <laughs> not to be confused with boo thing. This is rooting. <laughs> Uh, or niece. Yeah, I think that's, I think that might be true, Kelsey, her niece, perhaps, but that was who was running the chat, which actually we couldn't chat. There was no interaction between anyone in the chat, but you could send in a question and she could be, she, the, the Neely, Miss, Ms. Neely could, um, you know, send it over to Rachel or whatever. Um, so this is hers. Okay. Now let me go back. Peeing your pants. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's how I should put it. <laughs> it just seems, you know, like I was expecting a lot more, I guess, like bedazzles or something like, you know, like uh, like an artisan, like I'm all for it, but you know, I, I feel like I could do that. And maybe, you know, high fashion is, is sort of like simple a lot of times. It's like, oh, I like, if you look at a modern painting, you're like, I couldn't do that. Like just Jackson Pollock, yeah, I could do that. But maybe you couldn't, maybe that's one of those things where I'm like, I couldn't actually accomplish this, but. I just don't see myself ever wearing this, ever, ever. I, I don't know. Um, and this is the color version, I guess. I heart you and I'm rooting for you. It's giving, like, what's that one brand that was big a few, you know, 10 years ago? It was like the AIDS red. And it was like very simple and everything was just like red and with like white text. Like, that's what it reminds me of. And also the Melania Trump, obviously. Um, it's interesting. Yeah. It's not the best. And that's what it looks like from the front. It just looks like you work at the mechanic shop, which is nothing wrong with that. It's just, I don't wanna lead people to believe I'm either in the army or work as a mechanic. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It just, a, it's a different look. And I don't know how much they cost. They didn't say that. Um, and I'll show you for context, cause I know people are like comparing it to the money thing. Um, to show you what that looks like. Um, very similar vibes. She really doesn't care, does she? That would be more appropriate, I feel like, th those words. Um, <laughs> I'm booting for you. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, not a fashionista. I, you know, ridiculed Rachel for wearing bicycle shorts to a professional conference on stage because I just think that you know if you're charging thousands of dollars you should probably wear at least jeans <laughs> but that's again my perspective I don't know like who am I I'm not the fashion police I'm not uh what's that woman who I think she died uh I forget her name never mind you know who I'm talking about the one with all the plastic surgery before she passed away Joan River I'm no Joan Rivers okay <laughs> I'm no Osborne. 
Um, so yeah, so that that was that. Uh, and the other tea that I gleaned from being late to the live um, was that she's going to this weekend. She's going to Canada to participate in that climbing Everest thing that she did with Dave before. We have to like summit. You have to climb a certain amount of mountain top over and over again six times to like it's the equivalent of Everest like the miles walked or whatever she's doing that again so thank you that was the other uh that was the other not tea but like what she's up to so in preparation for our tour she's going to do Mount Everest equivalent walking so very cool, very cool. Okay, um, and now I'm assuming you guys would want to know the tea that I just sort of insinuated, and maybe I'm making it a bigger deal than I, it should be, but um, I came across this. Let's just go into it. We'll, we'll delay the Lisa Billy thing for a while. It's, this part's short, but this is like my conspiracy theory. So I was watching a video on YouTube. It's unlisted. And I don't know if it's always been unlisted or if it's just unlisted right like now, but it came out in February, 2021. So that's before Twilight Gate happened, but after the divorce happened, she's talking to Kathy Heller, someone that Cam and I have talked about um, on cringe fluencers. Now, I was sort of looking into Kathy Heller and I came across, I know she had interviewed Dave Hollis before and I didn't, I knew someone had told me she had interviewed Rachel Halls before. So I searched it, found the video, and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> so I'm going to play the clip of this unlisted video. Basically, in it, and you'll hear exactly what she says, but basically in it, Rachel says at the time she was going to, her plan was to turn off comments on all of her social media. And that she hadn't told her team yet, but that was her plan. Now, this is before she does the infamous live stream where allegedly, and I watched it, it's not completely true. It was like a little, again, similar to what she just said about her tour. Little dribbles and nibbles, nipples of truth, mixed into the overall context of a lie. Um, but basically, uh, she in that live stream that caused Toilet Gate, someone had said, you know, I'm depressed and I'm upset that my house isn't cleaner. And Rachel's answer was, okay, like just, you know, don't worry about it or hire a cleaner, right? Hire someone to clean your house. And then like, she's like, I have a cleaner. They come twice a week, whatever. And then that was the live stream. And someone said, you're unrelatable. No one can afford a house cleaner like you can. You're unrelatable. And she got pissed off, right? Okay, that was the preemptive, that was in April, that led her to record the TikTok where she like goes ballistic and starts saying, you know. I wanna be relatable. And no one wakes most up. Most people won't get up at 4 a.m. The whole thing, we've all seen it most likely by now, hopefully. But this, so that was in April, that was the big thing. But then in February, she's talking about turning off her comments because social media is so toxic and that um, it's like, you know, the worst place and that she was going to stand up for herself at some point because she had had enough. But in the same conversation brings up the sweet woman who she doesn't say cleans her toilet. She said cleans her house. She doesn't have the derogatory, whatever, but she's talking about the cleaner. She's bringing up the cleaner. She's using her name in the same conversation, talking about sticking up for herself. I was like, weird, very weird. So let's watch it. Maybe I'm making more about it than it is, but I have just, I thought it was all off the cuff. And the fact that she preemptively was already dealing with like social media hatred and all that. And like saying that she was going to stand up for herself. I was like, interesting. So let me get it. Hold on. Cause I wasn't planning to unveil this today, but I might as well. I also came across some other stuff and I'm like, what the hell? But I need to like get someone to tell me what it means <laughs> exactly before I uh, dive into that stuff. But new stuff is coming. Right? Okay. Here we go. Our girl, Kathy Heller. Okay. Um, right. Let's see. I think it's just as hurtful for the person who's writing it. Okay, here, it's around here. And Ken, this is one of the criticisms I made about Kathy Heller. I said that she's like known as the crying self-help person because she's always crying and she did not let me down in this. 
right. What do they care? Okay. Doing. You're trying. So it doesn't have comments yep. on anything she yep. does. Okay, wait. Look, if I say something stupid, something wrong with them, which I think it's at the root. Okay. Whatever. A hundred percent. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And I, I guess I would speak to anybody who's going through not just a divorce, but also a relationship of any kind. I think that it's meant to be what it was. Yeah. I really do live my my life believing that things happen as they're meant to, and so I don't hold very tightly to. Okay, so I'm cutting through because this is an hour conversation. I'm cutting off the beginning, like the hi, how are you, whatever. You're so amazing. You're so amazing. That's like Kathy's take on things. Again, this is unlisted as 200 view, under 200 views, and it was posted February 15th, 2021. Okay, just saying. So this is like hot tea, everybody. What I think things are supposed to be because I think that that, that just creates unnecessary pain. So yeah. it was exactly what it was meant to be. Beautiful. Agreed. I'm so happy that we at least got to say that on this show. And I'm sure you've <laughs> said it a million other times. Um, so moving on to, of course, it's so hard to talk about three of your books in this short time, but one piece I think we could talk about from Girl Stop Apologizing, which I think it's at the root of everything poisonous is shame. I think mm -hmm. shame is like, ugh, like regret is so healthy. Oh, I want to be constructive and fix, but shame and so in this book, you literally say it's a shame-free plan for embracing and achieving your goals. But what does that mean to you? Where does shame show up, do you think, for women? And how is that dangerous? And how can we That's what they're talking welcome about. welcome all parts of ourself so that this 20-town brick is not carrying on our back? I'm probably going to misquote it, but Brene Brown has this quote that I love that says something like, guilt is the feeling that you did something wrong and shame is the feeling that you are wrong. Mm. Like that there's something wrong with you. It. Wow. And that always resonated. You have not with heard so that, much because Kathy. I, You're like in the self-development space. It's like, I never heard of that. Okay, sure. I feel like most women, when they don't meet whatever, you know, invisible standard they've, you know, the world or themselves have set right. for themselves, they feel like there's something wrong with them. They're not like, oh, I didn't do that. They're like, oh, I knew it. I'm not smart enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not young enough, old enough, thin enough, whatever it is. And so we allow that feeling to control what comes next. I think shame is something that is used by, a, for a lot of us, by parents, by our family of origin, maybe by partners in the past to control us. And then we allow that shame that we manifest ourselves to control our actions too. And the reason I wanted to call it shame free was because so many women, like I tend to attract women who have big dreams, who are ambitious, yeah. who are extra, who have bright lights mm -hmm. to shine and they struggle with what other people think of them for that. What does their mother-in-law think or their partner or kids or friends or whoever and so they stop themselves from trying or putting themselves out there for fear of what's going to happen if they do. Um, and it is a, it is not a, a light switch, at least for me. I wish that it's something that we could just kind of flip off and then those feelings never pop up again or that negative self-talk never shows up in your life. But what I found is it really is a process of learning yourself, learning your triggers, like what's going to set you off um, and learning how to navigate around them. Um, I actually made a big decision yesterday. I haven't told my team yet and I haven't announced this publicly. Okay, here it comes. Here's the big T right here. She's like, I have made a big decision. I have not told my team yet. Okay, this is February, posted February, 2021. All right, here we go. But I made a big decision yesterday that I am going to shut off all comments on all my social media platforms forever. Um, and I made that decision because I have spent so much time working on not caring what other people think and not hearing that negative voice. And I, I've done so much work on this. Like, I don't know if anybody has worked as hard on this topic as I have. But Did we all just hear that? No one has worked on this topic more than she has in the entire world. Then a month and a half later, two months later, Twilight Gate happens. That she doesn't care about what people think about her. The buildup, the irony. But I've noticed this shift 
in the last year, especially, and I don't know if it's because people are at home or they have more time. There's so much vitriol in the comment section. And truthfully, what I have done for the last year is like when I happen to see something and like, look, if I say something stupid or ignorant, it is, yes, don't be like, girl, we don't say that. That is, you don't, whatever. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you so much. I've, I've learned, thank you for that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking I about know. me posting a picture of like a tree uh, and some be, someone being like, you're ugly, go die. Like the, you would not believe the comments. Like the yeah, but that's not what the person that in the comments was saying. Like you're unrelatable <laughs> was saying either. She wasn't saying go die. Like I, those comments are stupid. I don't like those either. But that that I mean, obviously this that hadn't happened that hadn't happened yet in this timeline. But she doesn't take any criticism, anything, from what I can understand. There's it's all negative hate talk. So it's like okay, so you're saying like yeah, let me know, but not really, because if I don't agree with it, then don't tell me. It gets better. Things people say, and what I've gone to do is, I will go look at people I admire. I'll go look at The Rock or, you know, <laughs> Lizzo or Reese Witherspoon or just different people, and I'll scroll until I find people saying hateful things to them. And I'm like, oh, see, look, this is the price of admission. This is how the internet works. It is what it is. And I had this like epiphany yesterday. I thought if my kid was being bullied, right. I would not tell them to go find another kid getting bullied to know that that was normal and okay. No freaking way. And it really is like social media has become this thing where it's like, you're coming into my yard. You're coming into my house and being like, I, this is ugly. I hate this house. I would right. never. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. And as a creator, it does begin to affect what you put out in the 100%. world. hundred percent. You know, you control your message. You don't say the same things. Like I have found myself, I'll just like put an emoji. Like a literally, I'll have a picture and I'll just put like a heart emoji. I will say nothing. And I found myself doing that. I am a fucking, sorry, I don't know if I can cuss on your show. Go I'm ahead. a fucking writer and I'm not writing because I know that someone's gonna find something in that to hate on. And then other people will try and come to my defense and then it becomes, it's crazy. And I, I know that there are people who don't have comments on like Taylor Swift doesn't have comments yep. on anything she yep. does. And I feel like I've hesitated to do it because I'm like, no, you're strong enough. Like, you got this. You can take this. And I just had this, like, thing yesterday where I thought, no, yeah. no, you don't get, if you want to hate me, awesome. You don't get to do that in my space. Yep. So this is sort of the boundary. This is kind of going back to that idea of code. Okay. So a couple things here. Um... When you're in the business of selling your life story as your product and as what is making you money, like you are inviting people into your home. When you turn the camera on and you're in your podcast room in your house and you're doing a vlog of you on the couch meditating and Palo Santoing and showing you and Dave and shaving his mohawk and what you are inviting people in and by saying like, shut up unless you are gonna praise me and buy my shit, it's like, that doesn't make, I think that's why she never did turn off the comments because her team probably was like, don't do that because, you know, people aren't going to, you're not going to have any interaction there <clears throat> and you're not big enough. And like Taylor Swift has music that I can consume without me thinking about her life at all. Like, I wonder what she eats for breakfast. Like, that's not Taylor Swift's like whole thing. She's got music. Rachel has Rachel. That's it. There's no other thing that Rachel provides other than herself that's for sale. So this really doesn't apply. I know she thinks she's the rock. I know she thinks she's like, especially at this time, like this like boss babe entrepreneur that she's got these tips that are unrelated to her own life. But in reality, it's all been her. Again, even her fiction books were based on her life. So everything she's ever created, maybe the only thing I can think of is like her event planning was like about the brides and about that. That's different. But the stuff where she really became famous for is about who she is, what her thoughts are, what her mind is doing, what, what steps she took to get where she's at. That's her whole successful career. Every page of all of these books, including this one too, Girl Stop Apologizing, 
is full of what I did, what I said, what I thought, what I had for breakfast, what sex I had with my husband, what's, you know, what sex we didn't have, like, you know, it's, like, very personal, even going down to, like, the stuff with her brother, like, you know, there's a time and there's a place. I'm not saying she shouldn't share the things that she's shared, but then you cannot expect everyone in the whole world to go, like, awesome, girly, here's all my money from my job, you know, take it, take it, like, There's got to be balance or else her head is going to fucking explode, you know? Like, you can't just have, like, I don't know, like, just, again, like, undying love and attention that doesn't exist. It can't. So the fact that she's, like, you know, I don't know, like, saying all this stuff, it's, like, eek. She was not in a good place. And then, but it was already brewing for months. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, all this stuff was going on and on and on. And people didn't like some posts that she made about, like, tomatoes. I came across that recently again because she was comparing different tomatoes to, like, BLM and, you know, racism in America. Like, I was born and I grew up in this tomato and that tomato. It's like, what are you talking about? She was trying to make it, like, poetic and it just did not land. So maybe that's what she was talking about. But it's interesting what actually happened later. And she said, like, she's used this analogy on other podcasts and her own and on other people's platforms. So she said, um, and I think someone said in the comments, like, um, about, like, celebrities just post an emoji. We're losing the context of what they could be telling us, what they could be sharing. It's like no one is preventing you from sharing your thoughts. But if you are, you know, not perfect or whatever, and you can't handle that, that is on you. Because Rachel wants to be, she's like, it's not freedom of speech. It's that undying love and, and positive vibes that cannot exist in this world. It can't. And unless you block every single person or turn off the comments, you can't get it. There's always going to be someone who's going to go watch my stuff and go, wow, what a hater. Always. There's going to be people who watch her stuff and go, wow, what a delusional like person that's you know so full of themselves. We all have different upbringings. So the fact that she's like, she's getting confused, like, oh, I can't even post anything. It's like, you can, but you don't want to be criticized. And that's on you. That's not on the people criticizing you personally. Okay. Back to it. Kathy is like, so just, oh, I feel your pain. I feel your pain, girl. Dependence is if you're ra- if you were raised in a certain way if you were raised to be a good girl if you were raised to be pleasing to others if you were raised to make sure that you got good grades and the teachers liked you and mom and daddy were proud this ends up manifesting in how we show up in other places and we believe that on some level you deserve to get to say those things about me oh did i not show up in the right way oh my did my God. hair not look good did my was my outfit not right you know i saw i'm um, i I some I just and I don't normally review comments, but the other day I was I was in there because I just wanted to write back. People were saying really sweet things. My son had done an episode of a yeah, show so with me. He's and, so yeah, he's so cute dude. and he was so proud of himself. So I was going in to just like say thank you because people were being so sweet. And someone was just like, literally, who do you think you are? Like, what are you even doing? You're trying to do now you have a show and then you're this and then now you're a writer and you're gonna and it was and then other women were like, finally, someone said it. Who does she think she? And I was like, I, you know, I agree. I'm just like, get out of here. But at the same time, I thought, man, if I create content that you don't like, unfollow me. That's it. <laughs> unfollow me. Here comes the Dave Hollis rant that he can't even fucking come up with himself. Apparently, he just got this like from Rachel probably talking about it unfollow me if you don't like me the content the books that i make unfollow me they're so unoriginal not even they're psychotic from his own admission he called it psychotic not me uh rants are unoriginal or taken from rachel dave and heidi have not one original thought (laughs) caught but the fact that you would follow me just to say hateful things i'm I'm continuing this paradigm So true that you get an opinion here it's and so that you true. can shame me into silence or that you can shame me into not posting. And so I feel like on it. I, and I'll say this for the record, just, you know, while we're here, I never, ever, ever have said, I don't believe. And I, if I do, I take it back that Rachel should not post anymore. Like for the sake of like, 
for the sake of humanity, Rachel Hollis should never post again. No, I don't think that. I think she should do whatever she wants to do. But I have a right and everyone here and everyone on Reddit has a right to talk about it to as, as much like as our heart's desire. We are allowed to discuss things in this country, period, done. Like they, you know, I'm not going to her house. I'm not writing, and I don't think anyone here is, and I hope you aren't, going to her house, writing on her, you know, DMs or whatever, like invading her garden or whatever. If you're just discussing this stuff in a, you know, like in our corner of the dark corner of the web, as Dave would say, that's our right. And if you try to take that away and shame us, she's talking about shaming women, shaming us for having an opinion other than you, Rachel Hollis, ex-wife of Disney executive and, you know, mother of four. Oh, you are anything but perfect angel princess. Sorry, babe. Sorry, girl. Stop dreaming. Girl, stop dreaming. <laughs> like that's never going to exist. And like the fact that she thinks that this is possible, it shows that she is delusional at this point. Maybe she's gotten more realistic, but based on her podcast episode, I just listened to no, not so much. Honestly, I'm going to sound, I'm going to pull a soapbox, but I feel like as, <laughs> as a society, we have got to start saying this is not okay. It's not okay. It, it's not okay. It no. is, it is so awful. Like I love Liz. She's one of my favorites. Yeah. And she posted this thing the other day that she was clearly trying to make people smile. She was like getting ready to go to the gym and she was like putting a wig on. It was so funny. And she's clearly trying to do something, put it out in the world to make people. And I can't even believe the stuff people wrote. And this wasn't like you had to scroll down. This was just one after another, after another about her body, about what she needed to look like, about girl. It's not okay. It's and we okay. accept it. We accept it and say that this is what social is. And I just, um, no. Yeah, no, it's so cruel. And my- Okay, so it's gonna keep going, but I think that her, when Toilet Gate happened, she had already had this idea that like, it's not okay anymore to shame celebrities for living in beautiful homes and having perfect lives. We need to stand up to these haters on the internet. This is my new calling in life. And this was gonna be her new thing. And I think this was the groundwork or she was playing it out. She was she was practicing at the retirement home, as they say, to plan out her next move move her next movement because if we remember she went she got famous for her stretch mark photo at the beach and that was became you know she she became like this woman empowerment i'm authentic i have stripes that i'm proud of you know boss babe that was the narrative that she crafted back then through that viral post then you know the stuff grew and grew whatever that was like her big thing this, I think, was her idea. I'm going to go viral with this post about being unrelatable. People are going to play it and my audience is going to get it. And I'm going to clap back finally at the haters that I've been pushing off for years and people are going to come to my defense and it just blew up in her face. I think there was more planning involved in Toilet Gate. She saw the moment in the live stream. I think that's real. But I think she had like, she was waiting for something to happen where she could now go, okay, this is my moment to capitalize. I'm going to post myself in with the stretch mark bikini version of that. Does that make sense? She was going to have her viral moment, but she thought it was going to go well for her. That finally a celebrity was standing up for the, the big guy. <laughs> you know, she is the Goliath in the situation that she was going to stand up to the, to the David in the you know comment section thinking that like oh this is going to be the true like you know revenge story this is old yeah this is from 2021 february this is before toilet gate so this is my theory is that she had a plan and she was acting out the plan during toilet gate that it's not just this like she was angry that day and it just was like her emotions i think it's calculated personally you let me know what you think husband always says like when I get like a nasty comment or someone has to go and leave a one-star review on the podcast he's like their tax dollars don't go to you right. what do they care that's like, what you that's owe them nothing right. they can just it's like free. click off of it she's an yes. idiot unsubscribe but instead it's like no I will take my precious time to make sure she knows she right. says like too much she's actually right. too happy I don't like her freckles she needs to get her teeth done and I'm like right. Oh, that's just me. Right. 
Like, and right. because you and I are actually really vulnerable, I care. I, I, I'm an empath. Like it, I feel things. So right. how could I not feel that? Right. Absolutely. Well, and it's like we, that I might, I just hit a point where I was like, you know what? I've done all the work oh on God. me that I need to do. I, I cannot tell you. How She's done all the work she needs to do on her. I just need to get big for a second. <laughs> Hear that again. She's done all of the work she needs to do on her back in February, 2021. Okay. That did not age well. How many times I have prayed I with a therapist, just like, what am I meant to learn? Why am I getting this? Why am, why did I see that comment? Like, what was I supposed to learn from this? Uh, and I'm like, maybe what I'm supposed to learn is to stick up for myself. Yeah, boundaries. because because the the truth is, as someone with a platform, and if you're listening to this right now, I'm not just talking about the platform I have. I think that someone who has 500 followers on social media probably gets this, or maybe you're just posting on your personal Facebook right. page and your Aunt Mildred saying something crazy to you. Like we all have our version of this, and it is not our job to accept that. You can think whatever you want, you can write whatever you want, but you're not going to do it in my space because as a person with a platform, I can't defend myself. Why? I can't go in and clap you back at you. Why? <laughs> she did it eventually. I don't have a platform. Because I have a platform, I can't go on my platform and stick up for myself without offending everyone. Like, I don't get it. I don't, I'm so confused by this. I really think, again, like this was her seeing Kathy's reaction and Kathy going, yes, queen, yes, yes, oh, yes, toxic, horrible, it happened to me too. I think she got like empowered and was like, okay, this is going to resonate with a lot of boss babe women. I'm going to go back just a second and review it because I'm also, I, I learned listened to this once and this is my second time. I'm like, damn, I feel like I am on to something perhaps. With a platform, I can't defend myself. I can't go in and clap back at you because no, you I'm going to start a war. Oh, no, no, no. And so yeah. it's like, I just have to take this? No. no. So and I the don't thing know what is, the answer is, but it's definitely not what's happening right now. Well, I love that you're going to hopefully start like a beautiful trend for so many of us. I think that's I, I really so refreshing <laughs> because I feel sometimes that the creator is being taken hostage because you can't yeah. say anything. You're just like, nothing. oh, you know. And truthfully, and Rachel, you know this, I just spent a week, sorry, I just spent a week with Joe Dispenza. And oh, I love him. Two red flags right there. Joe Dispenza is a total idiot. Beyond, like ridiculous. Come and on. everything is a freaking hologram. So right. all of that negativity, right. that's their projection. Like, right. And, and mm -hmm. yes, it's so damn easy to be threatened by you because going back to the shame, You've allowed yourself to show up when you're sweaty, in your van, crying, right. snotting, talking right. about all the things, your period, your kids, whatever. Right. That is literally the- For money, Kathy, for money. She made millions of dollars doing that. Why is that so difficult to understand? You have to now never criticize her too on top of making millions of dollars by using people like and grabbing them in and, and talking at fucking beach body conferences. Oh, she's really sacrificed her life for that. It made her a multimillionaire. What are you talking about? Oh, I can't, I can't clap back at someone who said, who do I think I am? Who do you think you are, Rachel? Who are you now? Bam, sorry. I didn't mean to cause issues. The brightest shining light that break, broke through any cloud. And do you know how much that hurts a person who does not want to let go of their shame? It's like, oh, that makes me know that I actually could and I can't. Right. How dare she? Right. How dare right. she just allow herself to be who right. she is with all the brokenness. Right. Right. My best friend talks about this. A lot. That's what it is. That's what it is. We're all jealous. That's always the, the answer for people who are out of touch. That we're all jealous. Because I made a comment about Kathy Heller on cringe influencers. And I, basically, I said, you know, she was the whole reason we covered her was because she was like, the day that I got the most people to unfollow me was on Instagram is when I posted a screenshot from my mortgage broker when he told me that I could afford a $10 million house. And the person gassing her up was like, they just don't think that it's possible for them and they're just haters. And like, we, you know, people like us just support other women and like the patriarchy, blah, blah, blah. It was like, 
No, <laughs> that's not the reason. If you took two fucking seconds to take, like to listen to someone else who's not living in a mansion, who's not like in your own circle jerk and somehow being helped by you and like platforming you, like someone who has no stake and like going through to a therapist, the same thing. Like you can't talk to someone who has stake in your life about an opinion because it could be like, change because of their relationship to you. So hearing a hater about why something bothers you, I think it's the best thing to do as long as it's constructive and not insane. Now you could argue my stuff is like over the, over the line of constructive and I don't disagree, but at the same time, it's like to say like no one ever who says anything negative, all they are is jealous haters because Rachel is, is cool enough to be sweaty in a video. Like you don't think that's all manufactured also. And part of the scheme to appear like she's perfect, but like also sweats like guys, did you know I sweat sometimes? I'm just like you. It's all part of a marketing scheme. Anyways, so Kathy is like, you know, she's she's off in her own like la la land as well with Rachel. So that's why this conversation is like continuing to go into an unhealthy. Because if I was talking to her, I'd be like, well, are you sure? Like, you know, you gotta let people like have their opinions. You know, you gotta deal with how you react to it, and that's how they would say. No one's or what does what does Rachel say? It's like um, anyone's opinion of me is none of my business right? That's a quote that Rachel Hollis allegedly found somewhere or came up with or whatever. Someone's opinion of me is none of my business. Okay. So where, why aren't you living up to that mantra that you've put in your books and sold things on? No, it only accounts for other people. Got it. That's how the fucking world works. When you're rich, all the rules don't apply to you. They apply to all the little people below you, all the people that work for you. Entrepreneurship is great for everyone, except for my employees who I, you know, will take their salary and not give them a, a, a boost until they've been there for one year, an arbitrary year. All my staff has to wear brunch clothes. This is stuff Rachel Hollis has said about her company. Give me a break. All right, back to this lovely conversation. A lot. My best friend was a pastor of a mega church and um, came out and wrote an incredible book called Worth It, which everyone should go grab. Um, everyone should go grab. Mm -hmm. She talks Just don't about say anything negative about it. That when you experience freedom, when you have this freedom to be yourself, some people see that as a light and, and an example that they also can shine. And some people do feel threatened because even if they're not aware of it, subconsciously, it reminds them that they're still stuck or they're still in chains or they're still not free. And so what they do is I have to break this down or show you how you're wrong or make you feel mm -hmm. bad. And I don't even think it's a conscious thing, to be honest. I just think that this is normal. And truthfully, I think it's just as hurtful for the person who's writing it. Like, man, if I can't have social media without you, Karen, feeling the need to be me, <laughs> then great. Yeah. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this away because also this isn't a good thing for your heart. Like you are creating. Again, like it's not Rachel that's really upset. I mean, she is upset, but like, it's really, she's helping you not express your negativity because that apparently makes you more negative for expressing a negative opinion. So it's really selfless as well. It's not selfish at all, like because she's offended and has feelings. No, not, not that, never. No, she's above that. It's because she's helping you and she's taking it away, your opportunity to be a psycho bitch. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you for helping me through this. Dating this reality that people are mean and awful and out to get you and yeah. lying and whatever, you, it's like, it, it's just crazy. Yeah, it is. And that's really really empowering um so, so empowering. then you went ahead and did it again it's it's like already the coolest hardest thing in the world to write a new york times best-selling book and then you're like i'll just do it three times because why not i've already done it once whatever so then you write a book in the middle of a pandemic you come up with another book um so didn't see that coming like the perfect title I'm sure by now everyone's like, we read it, we heard it. I'm like, all right, well, this is when she was on the show. So we're going to talk about it again. So here, let's talk about why, why you felt the need to write. Uh, clearly something was so on your heart to write this in the middle of everything that was going on. What inspired? Yeah, what was on my heart is I need to make income. And, um, you know, my RISE conferences weren't able to be... Uh, 
had in person. So I was counting on that. And Dave had taken 50% of my income because he was CEO and, you know, whatever. And he's got some sketchy tax stuff going on. And perhaps, allegedly, I don't know, just saying that as a joke, judge, it's not true. Um, You know, so... That's why. That's why she also shows up sweaty. It's not because she's such a heartfelt, heart, you know, full, I'm just here to help people think. It's for money. It always is money. That's the answer. Always. (laughs) What did you want people to get from reading it? So I was in the midst of editing a book I had already written, um, which is interesting because I don't know if that book will ever like come out now because it just feels like something other but I was in the midst of editing that and in March of 2020 and I tend to write with a lot of humor and a lot of irreverence and be silly and I was editing this thing which was like so funny and felt so wrong like I just especially back in March so she's coming out with another book I have a feeling it's gonna be this book that she's talking about now girl what the health especially because a lot of her podcasts as of late have been about hormone balancing, which is, you know, from what I can tell bullshit, at least the way she's, you know, describing it. She even had a doctor on that's like a gynecologist who said it's not real and she didn't address it at all. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, And she's been talking about dieting, you know, certain foods and gluten and all that. So I really think, and her period, I know like every fucking detail about this chick's period, like, you know, her peeing herself, all that stuff. I think she's going to go back to, to finishing because it's already done. She's going to publish the book, Girl, What what the Health? That's my prediction. I'm sure it's going to be a little different now with COVID being, you know, part of the conversation. But that's my thought because it's already done. She's coming out with the book soon-ish. She's supposed to be done with it soon. So that's what she's, that's the one that she put, she shelved to then write, didn't see that coming and. I think she said 10 weeks. It's called a crash book. And she talked to Tom Billy about it, how she's always wanted to write a crash book, which is like, you know, writing a book really, really fast. Um, so, you know, she just decided to write something because she had an opportunity to make money. And because her divorce was announced in June, she came out with the book in like September, I think. Let me look. I have like a little timeline thing that I'm working on. Uh, Okay, so let me see. So, um, let's see. Uh, Now, okay, the divorce was announced June 8th. And then September, September is when um, Didn't See That Coming comes out. Do you think that's also not planned? Because the book was not about the divorce, but the title definitely makes it seem like it is. So even if she does, you know, she can also say like, I'm innocent. I didn't write a book about my divorce. That's a misconception, which is true. It's not about the divorce. But if you announce very publicly in a, you know, very shocking way, basically, it was shocking to everybody that they were getting divorced uh, in June. That's just enough time to go, ooh, yeah, isn't that the chick that got divorced? The self, I'm sorry, I keep saying chick. That's not, that's not fair. The self-help leader who got divorced and had marriage conferences, I want to read the book about the divorce, even though it's not about that. It definitely is a good marketing plan to trick people into it. I think she's calculated. That's what I'm getting from this. We were all so scared and we didn't know what the heck was going on. And it was supposed to come out at the end of the year. And so I was like, there's no way. There is no way that I can bring this out into the world and have it feel appropriate. (laughs) And so I talked to my editor and I just said, man, I don't know about this. And she was like, okay, well, what would you want to write? And I said, let me just kind of, you know, peck some things out and kind of see what's here. And I wrote which I don't, is not the beginning of the book, but there's a part where I talk about what's good will always be good. And I, I wrote that. I started with talking about my grandparents and remembering these like beautiful times from my childhood, which is one thing that I loved about 2020. 2020 is the hardest year of my life, but it- for- <laughs> Kathy's crying again. Um, the book is about a lot of it about her family and how they disappointed her and let her down a lot and about her brother's, you know, unaliving himself was a big part about it. Um, and her, and honestly, all except for the, the intro where she addresses the divorce, um, she talks very highly about Dave. 
so he, he, you know, he was her rock. He was her help. He, you know, did a lot of good things for her, supported her. Um, that's what it's about. Basically a lot of like, my parents sucked. They were poor. My mom was annoying. Like, you know, my sister was this, like, it's a lot of that. It, It was pretty boring. And it was like, if you have an issue, you know, with something, you should figure it out. <laughs> like that was, that was the gist. It was not good. Forced me to slow down. And in that pace, I just, I really did come back to myself on so many levels. And um, oh, good. I started writing that and I realized, man, I got a lot of stories about how you live through hard things. And I knew that people were about to live through something really hard. We're still in the midst of what that is. And I think the ramifications of this will continue to exist for us for a long time. So um, I just wanted to write about that because, you know, nobody had answers, but there were answers for how to deal with side effects. Like nobody would know how to deal with a pandemic in 2020, but there is a lot of information about how you deal with anxiety, stress, fear, guilt, loss, like all of it. And so I just, that's what I wrote. And I'm really <laughs> proud of that book. Um, I, in when I started it, had no idea that I would be editing it. No, this is not the box cake book. This is just more information about her family. <laughs> the box cake was, I think, in Girl, Wash Your Face, if I'm not mistaken. In my mind, Girl, Wash Your Face is like the Rachel Hollis story. Girl, stop apologizing is wink, wink, nod, nod. MLMs are so amazing. I can't wait to come to speak at your conference, hun, book, because all the chapters, not all, but a lot of the chapters at the end or, you know, just strewn throughout a little bit are like, or if you're, you know, starting a new business where you have to make 25 cold calls a day, or or if you have to recruit your sister to be in your downline, like there's just little references to that and then uh the third book to me is like this is why no one should criticize me because I had a bad childhood book that's my take on the three and have my marriage fall apart um and I'm really proud of myself for um continuing and to keep going which felt like how am I going to put this thing out? People know that I'm going through this thing. And now I'm talking about how to go through hard things. It just was like so much. Um, but I'm proud of myself for doing it. And I think, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a, yeah. It's amazing. It's super brave. It reminds me of the, of a book that John Kabat-Zinn entitled full catastrophe living. And there's something about showing up for it all, even the hardest things. I know I get annoyed and I know I'm like a video person. So I get sort of more nitpicky about video production, but, and I accuse Kate, um, Kathy of this in the other episode as well on cringe influencers, but like she claims to have like a, you know, eight figure business, essentially like multi-million dollar business. And she has luxury retreats at her home for $10,000 a pop, you know, okay. She's got a podcast. She's got 40 million downloads, allegedly all wonderful, great happy for you but can't you like can you get someone to like fucking you know put the camera in the middle of the screen is that enough like can you just hire somebody for like a hundred dollars a day to make sure that you're not like this on the screen the whole time and can you get maybe a better microphone and like you know just put a little effort into your video production because people are paying good money to watch this content it would not kill you to like you know spend a couple dollars to make it better because why am i staring at a a candle and a cherry and a bouquet of flowers when you're supposed to be the one interacting in this conversation just my you know nitpick about production value that can be the best year ever right and and people going into 2020 you know we obviously didn't know what was about to happen and people were like 2020 vision it's gonna be amazing and right same and then you're like oh worst year ever and it's like no maybe best year possible ever because we slowed down enough like you said yeah 2020 was definitely the best year ever kathy thank you for reminding me of us all of that 2020 was the best year ever for everyone on earth she's so right she's so relatable god um and it just made me cry when you said that the way you said that which is the good will always be good Mm -hmm. you know like that doesn't go away right and also just like coming 
home, slowing down enough to like feel your freaking feelings. It's like, we're all moving so fast that the, mm-hmm. the things that we've all been through and we're like, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. I'll just watch Netflix more. I'll just scroll my phone more. It's like, you're not freaking fine. Mm-hmm. And maybe this year you're a little more fine because you allowed yourself to not be. Yes. I'm worse. And that's actually, <laughs> I'm worse, Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your concern. <laughs> for all of us. Right. I was, I was not okay. The people who died from COVID, yeah, they're, they're actually not fine. <laughs> They're actually a lot worse um, than they were when they were living, probably happily in 2019. But Kathy's right. Kathy's right. You're right. She's never wrong. And c- you can't criticize her or else you're just jealous and hateful and sad and pathetic. Okay. And it was the first time in a decade that I didn't show up regularly for my online community. Um, I wasn't present on social media for two months, which was maybe people listening to this are like, okay, but if you do what I do, it was a pretty big deal. Um, and I didn't, you know, I really do want to put goodness and positivity and light into the world. And I didn't have any light to offer. The only like joy that I had went to my kids. That's what they got. They got the joy. And then when they weren't here, I was on the floor and that was what I needed. And I allowed myself to really hold those things. And I came into this year, I I was just telling my best girlfriends this the other day. I was like, I've I've been trying to identify this feeling because I am so energized and hopeful. And and it's I'm still, you know, here working on (laughs) things are still hard. Like it's not like we waved a magic wand and it suddenly got easier. I was trying to identify it and I was like, I feel like I had a near death experience. Like, I feel like my best friend beans was like, Oh, it's like that scene in a movie where you start to step off the sidewalk, but you stopped yourself. And then all of a sudden a bus drove by and you realize like, Oh my gosh, this life is so precious. And every single piece of this, I appreciate. And I'm so grateful for stuff that like, me of 18 months ago would not have been this excited that I just got who cares like again like it's like this gives me I mean this is in 2021 this is again February 2021 so a year basically into the the pandemic at least for the United States you know (laughs) the most um like this gives me Ellen saying like I'm sad that I can't produce my show so I guess I'll just record me in my giant mansion in Malibu while I look at all my designer furniture and have my chef cook me fresh meals from the garden like I'm I'm just like you guys I'm a person too like fuck off like just go away don't sing imagine and send it out to like the news media like hey guys here we are my celebrity um you know uh acknowledgement or my celebrity you know donation is me singing the song on zoom for you all to feel better it's like yeah like let them eat cake vibes like no one gives a shit that you were sad rachel like we all got shit going on like we don't care more about you being sad or i'm not gaining anything from hearing you talk about it than i would be from hearing anyone else in the world that's sad it's like okay and like oh i i was just so sad it's like yeah join the fucking club got a new puzzle to put together with my kids. Like we are about to do a cactus puzzle. We are so excited. <laughs> cool. Like I would you're, never- you're, you're, you should be grateful. It's like, yeah, no shit. You have a, you have a home that you can live in. You have like everything you would possibly need. You have money, you have healthy children, you are healthy. I'm sure you have health insurance. Like that's better than millions and millions and millions of people who live nearby to you most likely. Can we just stop this worship of people on the internet, like celebrities? Like, I cannot stand it. They think we need to, like, learn from them. Like, bitch, we know what makes things better. Money and security. Now make it equal for everybody. <laughs> That's the answer. I never have appreciated getting to spend time with my best friends. Like, I didn't see my girlfriends. I have three best girlfriends that are my yeah. rock. They're, like, my people. I didn't get to see them for four months because of quarantine. And the first time that we saw each other again, we like, we're all, we all quarantined. We got tested multiple times. And the first time we all got to be together and like hug each other, we were bawling. Yeah. 
And like, man, I never knew there was going to be a time where I didn't have the ability to hug my best girlfriend. Right, right, right. So I just feel like I came into this year like, nobody cares. At least you have friends too. It's like, not everyone has friends that want, like at the end of this, like, I feel like I lost all my friends, like, you know, from like, not that that sounds like horrible. Like I lost all my friends, but like a lot of people moved and a lot of people were like, I wasn't even that close to. And I kind of realized that. And it's like, Oh, okay. At the end of it, it's kind of like, all right, I got to like rebuild this whole thing. It's like, you have so much to be grateful for. And yet you're telling everyone like, you know, it's hard to be grateful sometimes. It's like, not when it's you, (laughs) like no shit. You should be grateful. You have the perfect life. Like I, I appreciate life in such a way that I didn't before. Good for you. Sort of wrapping it up a little bit. So what's one thing, because you absolutely are right when you say you knew some things about going through hard stuff and anyone who knows a little bit about your childhood knows how unbelievably impossible some of that was and look at you. So what would you want to tell people who are going through it right now? And it might not even be COVID. It might be losing someone to something else. It might be job loss. It might be what is something you know? Um, I don't know if this is the part, but I think just in case, like trigger warning for, I think she's about to talk about her brother again, I believe, unless I skipped it already. Just FYI. Oh, that they might be able to take with them for getting through that. I'm going to go with my gut, whether this resonates with everybody or just the one person that it's meant to. Um, Me. We need you here. Oh, yeah. It does get better. Kathy's going to cry also, by the way. I swear to God, it gets better. But it only gets better if you keep moving forward. Um, I have, you know, um, I lost my older brother to suicide. And so it's something that is incredibly close to my heart. And I have lost a lot of friends, um, acquaintances in the last year, especially. Um who I this is especially hard for our teenagers because they are so isolated and many of them are isolated or in quarantine in homes that maybe don't accept and love them for who they are and so they feel more alone than ever um I swear to god it gets better whatever it is you're going through um Mm. if you can just stay here if you can just hold on if you can just get through one breath and then the next and then the next. Yeah, it's so it's so f- interesting. I hope I, I maybe I can check it. I know I've played it before on this channel, but like Rachel is sort of like notorious for having this one car rant where she's like someone posted like just if you can just breathe today that's enough and she's like no that's not enough guys like that is so not she didn't say these words but basically inferring like that's pathetic like you can do so much more you need to push yourself and get up in the morning and do more be better be a better mom be a better wife be a better boss babe like you can keep going stop complaining bitch like that was her vibe now, oh, COVID's happened. Okay, now I've changed. I'm making a puzzle. I'm grateful now. Now, all of a sudden, she's changing her tune. Like, just take one breath at a time. It's going to be okay. And, you know, I've been thinking about this, and maybe this is the wrong take. Because, I again, I don't think she should ever censor herself to the point for anyone else. Like, whatever she wants to share... I'm fine with as long as I can either like it or critique it. Like as long as I'm not censored by her not censoring, I'm fine with it. Does that make sense? But you know, the stuff about the brother, I listened to her sister's podcast and her sister, her sister, like, you know, blood related sister, not like a sister-in-law, but her sister lost her husband, had a heart attack. He had a heart attack and died unexpectedly, like fairly young. And, um, you know, she's got kids and is kind of, I think she's got kids and she's like living her life. She's got a podcast. I have not heard her one time bring up her brother and what happened. Oh, look who it is. (laughs) Weird timing, but okay. Um, and I feel like, you know, she has just as much right to like, I haven't heard Rachel's family, (laughs) Katie, (laughs) 
Rachel's family uh, have any say. Like Rachel wrote a whole book about like kind of all the bad things that they've done and like all the poorness that they forced her to be in and poverty and whatever. It's like, you know, like Rachel uses that as like her a card of like, hey, you can't, you know, criticize me. I'm not privileged. I, I grew up poor and all this stuff. It's like, I, I think at a certain point, like you've lived your life more as a privileged, financially stable woman. Like you can, of course, express where it's come from, where you've come from and what, you know, how it's made you different. But like at a certain point, like you can't keep relying on that as like my whole thing, my whole story of life. Like, oh, well, you know, this thing happened when my brother, like, you know, that's his own story and she's making it her story. And it bothers me to a point. I hope I'm not coming off insensitive because of course it's part of her life, but it just feels like it's almost like capitalizing off of something that's nothing to do with her. Most likely. I don't know. Okay. And Kitty's here. Say hi, Kitty. Say hi. Let me get here. Say hi. Want to do a little meow meow? Just purrs. <laughs> All right, back to it. Um, I always think with my brother that he made um, a split second decision that was a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Right? And yeah. he struggled so much. And I am so grateful that he is not in pain anymore but I also imagine a life that he could have had. And so the resources are out there. The friendships are out there. The people who love you, the the pieces that you need, I believe in my heart that you're here for a reason and you gotta, you gotta stay with us. Now, I hate to say it, and she's like crying, but it's almost like I did something there. I really saved a life today. It's like, did you? Like, that's the safest answer possible. Like, of course, like, that's the way that everyone should say, like, to everyone, like, you know, I guess I'm getting in the weeds a little bit, but like, I really, it bothers me. It's like, it gets better, guys. It doesn't always, it doesn't always get better. What are you doing to make someone's life better? Like, just to be like, don't do it. It's like, that's not enough. You know, Kitty. <laughs> don't play the music again like you did last time. But you know, it's like, yeah, of course, like people can't argue with that. Like no one's gonna say, wow, Rachel, bad take. Of course, that's the good take to have. Yeah, don't do anything, you know, make a rash decision. But it's also very safe. And it's like, she's like, I just, I really did something. It's like, did you? I don't know, maybe I'm being too critical, I'm sorry. Beautiful that that was your answer because I often say that the opposite of depression is not happiness, but purpose. Mm. And the re- <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I plan to cover Kathy Heller in more detail in the future, but that's her, that's something that really bothered me. She's like, um, de- the opposite of depression is purpose. Now the opposite of depression is living comfortably <laughs> to me. Uh, the opposite of depression is, you know, treating depression in my opinion <sighs> these people are nuts man as soon as you get money like you become insane I, I'm, I'm calling it there's some sort of like you know I don't know like what do they call it influenza like that one guy who crashed his car and killed somebody because he was rich it was fine he got let off influenza is real you just become totally unrelated to anybody reason I do this show is because I think people don't feel seen and they don't, they feel invisible. I don't feel seen and I'm not seen by York. you, Kathy, because you've seen, you've seen me by being a, a un, unreliable, sad, jealous person. That's how you see me. Both of these people see me and see all of us. Anyone would, that don't love and adore them as that. And it sucks. I don't like that. It, makes, it hurts my feelings. Like, oh, I'm sad and pathetic. That doesn't make me feel good. But that's 50% of everyone that's out there. So... Whatever. four times to see Dear Evan Hansen. It's like my, the greatest show ever. And it's all about a kid who commits suicide. And at the end of the day, people, when they ever ask me, why do you do this show? I'm like, for that reason, like, oh, I didn't get that from the show. I'm like, no, that's it. Cause there's a quote, you know, 
all men leave, lead lives of quiet desperation. And what you just said is we need you here. That was your go-to response. That is so powerful. That's all that needs to be said. You it's are not. needed here. Mm -hmm. I think Rachel, people don't think that they're needed. I think that they very quickly compare themselves to the 14 other people on the internet that they looked at yesterday and say, I'm not needed because she's right. better and she's prettier and this, and therefore I can't get through hard things because I don't feel a sense of purpose. I don't right. know that there's four people who need me. The right. fact that that was your answer, it speaks volumes about you. So as we're sort of ending, one of the other things that you do in the ending of this book is you talk about reimagining the future, right? So like walking from that, is it possible? Can we find a way to give what gifts we have? Are we needed? And can we find a way to actively be needed? Let me ask you a question that I don't think, you know, it's going to be a tough one. Are we needed? I know you literally just said that five seconds ago, but I'm going to softball this back to you. I'm going to lob this, uh, this uh, cotton ball over the net to you, Rachel. Are we needed? How do we do that? I mean, I, this is like all everything that I do. It's like, I, it's exactly what you said is I feel like we have this potential. We have these gifts, we have these things inside ourselves, but we compare how we can do that thing with somebody else. Right. Well, I can't do it this way or whatever. I was, um, I have the sweetest woman who cleans my house once a week. Okay, here we go, everybody. Here we go, folks. Okay, I'm going to go back a second because this is part two of the uh, theory, conspiracy theory on Toilet Gate was a crafted story, not a off-the-cuff moment from Rachel. Here we go. The same terms, not the toilet. She worked the toilet in workshop. She workshopped um, cleaning the house into a toilet cleaner for whatever reason. <laughs> Should have workshopped it backwards. Um, but here we go. All right, buckle up. Sure how we can do that thing with somebody else, right? Well, I can't do it this way or whatever. I was, um, I have the sweetest woman who cleans my house once a week. Shout out to Sherry, thank you. Um, so she's in our bubble. I did it for several months, I'll be honest. I was like, Sherry, I need you in this bubble, girl. I need yeah. some help. Um, so Sherry was here the other day and she was cleaning. We always chat and um, she, I was, we were talking, I was talking, I was teaching her about love languages um, and this is sort of, of course a you were, of right. course you were, you're like, Sherry, <laughs> sit down, have some, Girl, this me. Is, I'll, talk, I'll talk to a barista. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to anybody. So I'll talk to a barista. I am the coolest person. I actually speak to other human beings who aren't at my vibe level. I am so nice and giving with my time guys. I actually speak to my sweet cleaning woman, Sherry, shout out Sherry. I was forcing her to listen to me while, uh, you know, because I pay her to be here and she was trying to clean the house so she could get home probably to her family, but I had to force her to listen to what love languages are. Okay. So um, I was, I saw this thing on, on Instagram and I wish I could remember, like it was, it was served to me. It wasn't like a person I follow. So I don't know who that said this first. Okay. So if this is someone else's, I, this is not my thing, but someone just asked a really simple question. They said, do you ever love yourself in your own love language? And my mind exploded. I was like, right. what? what? Yes. Which is like, if y'all listening, if you know, love languages, we all have them. And this is how we love others and how we hope others love us. But I've never thought of that. So mine for the longest time was words of affirmation. I feel like it shifted to um, acts of service. And so I was just talking through this to Sherry. I'm getting off on a tangent, sorry. So I was explaining this to Sherry. And I said, well, Sherry, what's your love language? And she said, I'm, I, I think I would be physical touch. And I was like, um, she Don't was like touch I love though. hugging people. I miss it so much. And we start talking. I'm like, oh, okay, well, just so you know, you know, is it a massage? Is it a bubble bath? Is it like things you could do for your physical body that you would be loving yourself? And as we're chatting, she's saying, yeah, you know what I always wanted? And she tells me this dream that she had, that was like this thing that she wanted to do in the world. And it was working with people through physical therapy and 
all of this. Okay, here's my theory part two. I think Rachel had the plan. That, okay, I'm going to go in the middle to give my theory. Rachel thought that this, this TikTok was going to go viral. This is her thought that it was going to, she had the whole setup. She was going to be called on Good Morning America. And she was going to explain that the sweet woman who cleans her toilets is named Sherry. And I've been teaching her about love languages. And she wants to be a massage therapist. And I've walked her through this whole thing and through COVID. Like it's this crazy story about how I helped my cleaning lady become like a massage therapist and that's her true dream and I stuck it to the people on the comments that have said this and this and this and I stuck up for myself and look if I couldn't um you know if if I wasn't doing the work I was doing then I wouldn't be able to help people like Sherry my cleaning woman who's so sweet that's what I think she was planning now it did not come off well (laughs) she fucked it up (laughs) But I don't think it ever would exist in any universe. I think she thought we were still in 2015. But why is she giving this much detail without having a purpose behind it? Why is she saying the sweet lady who cleans my house? Like, I just, to me, it's like, it's too, it's too weird that the same words are used. It almost seems like there's planning involved. Like she has, she's weaving it somehow so that she can because she's media trained she's done interviews she's been on the today show she's been she's gone she's met oprah for god's sakes like she's done this already she understands what press is like so you have to have a backstory you have to have a certain narrative that you're telling and i think this is her plan honestly i think she just really fucking backfired and that's why she didn't understand why it was problematic because she's like this is this is supposed to be my moment (laughs) q k (laughs) and Maybe I'm too, I don't know. Just the words. I was like, whoa, what happened? Stuff. And I was like, oh, why don't you do that? What? She's like, oh, you know, I'm older now. And like, what? And I'm like, no, no, absolutely not. At the very least, I was like, at the very least, Sherry, have you ever thought about volunteering? Like how many, because she was talking about doing things with um, patients who are older. I'm like, how many, like, private i mean right now things are different but freaking a i bet like you could do zoom calls with people who are in a nursing home right now and they would be so ecstatic right and then you already have a relationship so when pandemic ends now you've got this existing thing and you can go in and you like if this is on your heart i literally said this to her i'm like i believe that when we have those callings on our heart that is god or the universe whatever you believe in telling you what your purpose is so it doesn't have to be this like, yeah, because she was like, well, I would have to go to school. When I, I'm like, no, you have a heart to show up for people in this very specific yeah, community. Exactly. You could be doing that by the end of the week, yep. like pandemic yep. or not. Yep. So I think it's like, folk- how is she supposed to do both? She's supposed to like go and volunteer on Zoom with people from the nursing home while also cleaning Rachel's house and being exclusively in Rachel's bubble. Like, I'm confused. Focus on, um, focus on what, not how. If you start out, if you get your what, and then you immediately jump into all the hows, you will talk yourself out of it. Yeah. Well, how would I do this? And what would it look? No, 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 no. Let the what become so big and so like bright and exciting and beautiful that you just jump into any way to achieve that quickly, as opposed to having to be a certain way, or I've got to have a degree or you know, I, I do a lot of, um, I, uh, mentor a lot of women who own small businesses and I was talking. Yes. Rach, the mentor. Oh God. Yeah. Okay. Here's another part to this. Okay. Haley has a great point. Remember at the time, okay, we go to more conspiracy. And again, this is for fun, but also I kind of do believe, but also I sort of do believe it in a way. I'm willing to be convinced on either side, but I, I think there is some possible truth to it and I'm willing to explore it further. But Rachel was working with an outside external PR firm at the time when Toilet Gate happened. That could be for the book. Wait, no, the book came out already. Okay, Toilet, toilet Gate happened in late March or early April. This interview that we're listening to came out February 15th. So not much time. Um, okay. So that's like the timeline, but she was working with it. Yeah. So why was she working with an external PR firm? Unless she was trying to like backtrack off of like the Dave divorce. But at this time she still had a team internal 
working full time for Hollis company. So it's weird that she had this external company working with her, guiding her on when to respond and when not to respond. Cause when she said like my team originally, like my team was upset, whatever. <clears throat> that wasn't her real team it was an external team. And she didn't say that until she was on the skinny confidential podcast. So I'm just like, yeah, like, why were they there? It's a little confusing because she had nothing coming out except for Rise, which she had to then like, reschedule to Labor Day to rethink her content. So I don't know. I I'm, I'm a little bit, mm, you know, Into that's true. Tea today and she was like, well, I would love to have that for the business, but I'm not a certified this. And I feel like I'd have to go back to it. And I was like, nope. No, we just, girl, I'll make two phone calls and we'll have some, you can freelance, you can hire someone on a contract. They will certify this for you. You can say certified by a blah, blah, blah. I just think that we make it a lot harder yeah. than it is. Are you a certified psychologist? No, you don't need to be certified in mental health. <laughs> just tell bitches whatever you want. They'll buy it up. They'll eat it up. God, it's so easy. Look, I've done it. I told people that, you know, they should lose weight because they're not compared to animals. I told people that they should, you know, they can't be trusted because they can't stick to Whole30. They thought it was great advice. People gave me millions of dollars. Psh, you need to be certified. <sighs> Dummies. Albanese, thank you. Thank you so much. Albanese says, Rich teaches the help and looks up to rich people. Unfollow me. Yeah. Um, yes. And it's like, it's almost like they have their, the language is like coded, like, oh, you know, rich women who live in this part of society, but the, all of their clients and the reason they have the money are people who are more down most likely. Cause I don't think other like rich, successful business people are calling up Rachel Hollis and going, I, I have, you know, this big acquisition and merger I got to work on, boss babe. What should I do? What do you think, you know? I mean, Rachel herself says, I don't know how to, like, manage money. All I know is how to make money. Like, she said that many times. So it's like people who are starting small businesses who are maybe interested in getting to understand entrepreneurship a tiny bit. It's like the basic, basic, like, you know, business essentials 101 course is like where Rachel's at. And she's teaching that course to like millions of women through social media. I don't think she's, you know, actually dealing with, but she, her, her idols are like Tony Robbins and stuff, but yeah, she thinks like, Oh, me giving out my free time to my sweet cleaning woman is a service to her. And just because, I mean, she probably owns her business, but she looks down at that business because it's not making podcasts. You know, it's not making millions of dollars. She knows what she's paying, paying Sherry. And it's probably not a, a, a salary that she finds appealing. We know Rachel's obsessed with money. She said that from the beginning. She's never been shy about wanting money and being like driven very much by Louis Vuitton bags and big mansions and Hawaiian vacations. We know that there's nothing inherently wrong about that. It's just not everyone's cup of tea, but yeah, there is that little, like, I don't know if it's coded language or like that little bit of like, they relate because they're two rich people who find themselves to be relatable to the middle class. Like, oh yeah, we're basically the middle class, like, but we're better than them. Like, you know, we're the leaders of that but we're appealing to that group of people. It's annoying. It's very, it's, it's infantilizing. Is not a great word for it? Um, I forgot about Dave, the other Dave. This is just stupid. It is just stupid. Nothing. Nothing is better. Mm. And this one's for Albanese. You have to think instead of sitting around eating Skittles and watching Oprah reruns. Okay, Albanese, that's your cue. All right, sorry, I'm gonna shut up now. I've been talking for a, a long time. And so time. if you have a calling on your heart, an idea, and, and ladies, let me just say this, because ladies. oftentimes women will only chase something if they can convince themselves that it will benefit others. Right. Let me say it again for the people in the back. <laughs> women oh, will only chase something if they can convince themselves that it will benefit others. I cannot tell you how many times. Is that a statistic? Like, where does that information come from, Rachel? Like, just all women from all ages of all times? That's a law? Okay. I sit down with these small business owners who are building, like, incredible things. And they'll be like, yeah, you know what? I just, I want to be able to do this so I could just give back to my community. I want to be able to do, and that may be true, 
but it's also okay if you want to do something because it lights your heart on fire. Exactly. It's exactly. okay if you want to do something because you think it's pretty or fun or interesting yeah. or it doesn't always have to be for the greater good of everyone around you. Oh my God, I know. Okay, last thing I promise is that now just to follow up with what you just said, I think what people could use from you because this is the it always comes back to imposter syndrome in my audience. And what really is behind that is I will not allow myself to make anything that's not perfect. So I can't start like people need from you, Rachel, if you believe this, which I imagine you do, people need permission to, to be messy, to make something mediocre, right. to start, to iterate. How do they do that? Otherwise they don't ever even begin. Right. Well, here's the thing. If you admire me, my career, my books, my podcast, anything that I do in my life, please know that I trudged through 15 years of garbage to get where I am today. And I'm not saying garbage created by others. I am talking, <laughs> I put out so much crap, so much crap. And the thing is, when you start anything new, you are going to suck. That is without question, you are going to suck. So it really comes down not to, do you want it enough? It's, are you willing to suck for as long as it takes you to become better? Are you willing? <clears throat> okay, here's my complaint about this. Like, I don't disagree. You do have to suck in the beginning, but there's a big gap between someone who has an income already that's stable and you're able to try and try and try and try again because failing in business and taking big risks and opening that bakery if you are someone who doesn't have generational wealth or is you know not being supported by friends and family you know that have a lot of money that are able to not you know lose their whole retirement by helping you when you don't have that if you fuck up if you open that bakery and your your baked goods don't sell or the neighborhood is not the place where people are walking in and getting your whatever and you can't do it, your life is over. Like it's over in a lot of ways. You have to go bankrupt or you have to like, you know, owe people money and it's like you it's not like oh just I'm afraid to try cuz I don't believe in myself. It's like no, the risk when you have a, a husband who works for Disney World or Disney or whatever the fuck and makes a million dollars plus and has, you know, stocks, you are able to take chance after chance after chance after chance. And maybe that 15th chance, it nails it and you hit, you know, girl, wash your face. But it's a privilege to even try. That's what they don't see. It's not that people are afraid to fail. They're afraid to fail because the failure has such bigger higher consequences and stakes for most of the country. It's like if, if Rachel failed at her event planning or her blog, what does she lose? Nothing. She could become a stay-at-home mother if she wanted to, or she could go back to a different job and it would be fine. A little embarrassment, oh, my blog didn't work, whatever. Someone who was gonna quit their job as a teacher or something and start to become a blogger or become an author, like Rachel says, just go for it, just go for it they might never recover from that financially. So I hate it when two women like this, multimillionaires tell me to take a risk, go take a fucking walk. Like, no, <laughs> like, yes, I could take a risk, but it's not that simple. The concept is not, I don't believe. There's a, think of it in your town, wherever you are, how many restaurants have probably gone out of business. I'm not saying all those people end up homeless, but all those people, if they don't have back up income, that could be their life. They took a risk and it failed. That happens. So it's not like, it's, it's more complicated. Why don't you guys, Rachel and Kathy, why don't you start a seed fund for women entrepreneurs? Why don't you put a million dollars a year, that would be part of your salary as you claim, put a million dollars a year into the seed fund and help women who are not as financially wealthy and have as many husbands that work at Disney World or in Kathy's case, Fox. I don't know what he did there, but she said that in the beginning that she worked at, he worked at Fox. So like, oh, we have stuff in common. Our husbands are media executives, cool and help people who don't have that privilege to start their business and then prove you right that all it is is taking risks. But no, but no, we charge women instead to get our wisdom and our knowledge. That's how we handle it. That's fucked up in my opinion. Willing to suck, like 
people are not afraid of failure. People are afraid of others watching them fail. Totally. Which is about your ego. It's not about your it's not. It's not about your creative process. This is your ego talking. And this- It's your ego, Rachel. Stop projecting on everybody. Goes back to that idea that most of us are raised from the time we're little girls to be perfect. No. Is your hair okay? Is your body thin enough? Did you no. dress right? Did you- So that it shows up in our creative process or the businesses that we want to make allow yourself to be crap. Like when Girl Wash Your Face got so huge, everyone was like, oh my gosh, your first book, this is girl. That was my sixth book. Nobody cared about the books that came before that. That line too really um, bothered me as well. Cause she's like, no one cared, no one cared. She had thousands of sales. She, when she posted in 2015, I forget the number, I gotta look it up. But when she posted that bikini photo with like the stretch marks or whatever, she already had like 100,000 followers already on kind of like Instagram or something or on Facebook. It's like, she acted like, she's like, I was a nobody. If I had 100,000 followers on Instagram, I would think I'm the biggest celebrity. I would walk around town like everyone's gonna know me. I can't go out in public anymore. Everyone's gonna look at me, you know, in, in the town, like in the city. Because like that to me is so huge. And she talks like, oh, it's nothing. Like, oh, I had nothing. No one bought, bought my books. It's like how Dave says. Dave had people lined up at the fucking parking lot to, to get, you know, built through courage, the worst book ever written, <laughs> signed by him. And he just spat on those people who were there, who did show up. So don't say, oh, if you just show up, like people will come. It's like people do show up for you and you treat them like they don't exist. It only matters if it's big bucks in your bank account. And this is why I cannot trust these people. I can't because what they say and what they actually act like are two different things. It's like why Rachel's crying because girl wash your face didn't hit the New York times bestseller on the week, on the first week. It didn't hit till week eight. And she was hysterical about it. How can you be grateful and write in a journal 25 times a day, how grateful you are and how amazing of a person you are when then you act like a, a, a psychopath crying like on a video? Why? I don't, it doesn't make sense. Like you're going to have to suck. And look, imposter syndrome, I feel like everybody doesn't know what they're doing until you get to a place where you're like, holy crap, I totally know what I'm doing. But it took 15 years, 15 years of sucking and failing and realizing that even if it was bad, I could count on myself. I can count on myself to figure it out. I can count on myself to fix it. It, it's gonna be bad. And then it's gonna get a little bit better. And then it's gonna be bad again. And then you're gonna lose money. And then uh, people don't like it. But all along the way, you're evolving and becoming what you wanna be. Um, I really do think that so much of success is a willingness to just stay in the game. Man. <laughs> Heidi, <laughs> not really, not physically, but he did pancake gate where he told everyone to unfollow him um, right after his tour, his tour, his book tour in his unfollow me in his mind failed because, um, you know, people did show up for him, did, sh did come and, you know, support him, but it wasn't enough for him. That's why he went, you know, so extreme to try to sell the book because he wanted to be a New York times bestseller uh, on that book too. So it's like, if they were truly pr practicing what they preach, and I say, some people are like, well, they don't have to, you don't, you don't have to practice what you preach to give good advice. It's like, well, then what other credentials do they have than uh, like other than their own story of success? They don't, at least in the self-help space, the only thing that they had, it's like, oh, I, I, you know, I was a psychologist and I learned all these things in school and that's why I know the brain. And, but no, they know what they've done and they're telling people what they've done. Okay, so if you're really truly grateful, why are you so upset that like more people didn't participate when you have 15 people showing up and are happy to be there? It's just, it's like, we all know it's lies, but we're supposed to believe it because they're influencers or whatever. It's like, no, I'm not gonna buy this crap. You're ungrateful, just like the rest of us. <laughs> and I started this race with lots of other people who are not here anymore yeah. because they didn't like the flack and they didn't like the feedback and they didn't like not being perfect. So they just pulled themselves out. Yeah. On my desk. And I guarantee. Is this... 
You know this book, the Seth Godin book, I, The Dip? I don't. It's like a 75 page book. It's like a pamphlet. It's not, it's amazing. <laughs> it's all about how like you will hit the dip and most people hit it and they're out. Right. And he's like, no, no, the whole journey is about the dip. It's right. not even, it's like who you get to become by going right. through the dip. Right. Right. So okay, um, I want to just ask you, where can people find you? And in that, I feel like you should at least get to mention this absolutely adorable piece of content, which is your new show that comes out Monday mornings. <laughs> what made you want to do this? So I Steven, actually, that's an old school thing. So back in the day, I used to do the show. And honestly, we, even in the opening, we have like footage of the old stuff because I want, by the way, I want people to see where it started. Please go watch it's called Rach Talk. It's on my it's YouTube adorable. channel. Go watch it if for no other reason than you can see me back in 2016, 2017 with like orange hair, no eyebrows, oh, crazy you were makeup. So cute. You were so but cute. I, what, I was trying. I was trying stuff and figuring it out and like working through. And so it was this really popular thing that I used to do with my community back in my blogging days. And just for fun, I thought, let's bring it back. Let's just have something that is to entertain people. If you want life advice, read the books, listen to the podcast. This is truly just me trying to make you giggle. And yeah, it comes out Monday mornings on YouTube. And then um, I'm Ms. Rachel Hollis on all the social platforms. So pretty soon, uh, there won't be an ability to comment. <laughs> just FYI. Get in there now. If you have anything there to now. say. Right. Speak now, now or okay. forever hold your peace. Exactly. Um, yeah. The show is absolutely. Someone, someone got their. Uh, you are privileged AF in there, <laughs> right in the nick of time. Adorable, and I love the free roll because I feel like you went from like Ellie Kemper to Beyonce. You were like, Ooh, Hi. okay, Hi, I'll everyone, take that. and now you're like. There were some sure Ellie Kemper vibes. I Not never yet. thought that, but you're absolutely right. That so that was cute the, that was the sweater. energy for sure. Right. God right. bless her. God yes. bless her. It was I've laughed through everyone with the deer. I love when you're like the beanie because didn't do the roots because mama oh, didn't get girl, to this salon. So bad. Oh, mine or forget I mean, it. It's like a, and the hair. That's why there's a beanie involved right now. Involved the roots. It, so what relatable. I, it's hard to get your hair done in these um, Everyone who's listening, obviously the podcast and the show and the books, but also Rise Live Weekend Rise coming, coming up. Right. It's coming in May. It's the first time ever that my women's conference is virtual, which I'm genuinely excited about. Number one, because for the first time ever, women who haven't been able to come because of like childcare right. or right. travel get to experience this, it means that we'll have a global community instead of just Amazing. a national one. Um, if you've never seen Rise Conference, it's so much fun. Uh, we have a documentary on Amazon Prime. If you look up Rachel Hollis, Made For More, you can you can find it there. And it'll show it's you right kind there. of what it's all about. But um, yeah, I'm really excited. The first time it's virtual, we're gonna do some fun stuff with video and it's, it's gonna be a whole thing. So that's coming up in May. You're a whole thing. And I think what's the most impressive thing about you is how generous <laughs> you have been over this last hour to me. Like you don't need to be generous. To me, a fellow millionaire who has a platform of allegedly 40 million people. The reason, there's n absolutely no reason in which Rachel should be nice to me and come across as caring and, uh, you know, giving of her time to sell product and to pitch and to, uh, you know, have the, her viewers go to my weekend conference or whatever the fuck. Like, yeah. Okay. There is so many reasons. <laughs> Generous to me. You don't need to make space for me. You don't need to treat me like I'm someone who lives next door. You could just kind of be like, okay, okay. Yes, okay. you do. And this is your legacy. You're actually just a really good person. Thank you. I think. Uh, click, click, click. Uh. Hold on. I got to play it. I'm sorry. No, if you have gag reflex, sorry. Uh, I want to throw up. Hold on. Uh. I've actually never seen the documentary, if you can believe it. I need to. I think, um, man, I want to. Okay, so if you didn't hear that part, Kathy's like, you're the best person. You're such a good person because you came on a podcast in which you have an agenda to sell tickets to my audience. 
best person ever. <laughs> of course, like that is how I judge everyone is like how they sell their, um, you know, items to sell. Um, and now she's going to accept the compliment, which I think is good, accept compliments, but then explain exactly how she's right. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Thank you. Thank you. I think, um, man, I want to, I want to show up in the world. Um, like I'm, I'm striving every day to be the woman of my dreams. And that's the kind of person that is present. That's the kind of person that holds space. Um, uh, it's something that clear, I've, clear, clear. I've learned to do over the last many years of, of getting to be in community with women. It's exactly what you said earlier that people don't feel seen. And so whether you're coming up to me at a grocery store or an airport or a podcast like this one, um, I want to hold space for that. Mm. And of course, wow. you're just, you know, you're just a, a chick like I am and we're just chatting. Just so a chick like I'm, I am. I, I meant what I said. I'm grateful. She's relatable, guys. For the time. And I'm grateful for a chance to speak to your audience. I swear. You're the cutest. You're just so freaking lovable. That's what it is about (laughs) you. Like you're in the car today and you're like, Brad Paisley texted me. I'm like, you're. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hold on. (laughs) Everyone start over. Start over everybody. We got to clear, clear, clear it out. Somebody ought to smack you. (laughs) Okay. That was mean. Sorry. Uh, Clear, clear, clear. She's going to now talk about how relatable. I'm just like you. I'm just like you. Brad Paisley texted you today. What it is about you. Like you're in the car today and you're like, Brad Paisley texted me. I'm like, you're forgetting that you're famous. Like you no, didn't, you're like the what? rock sent me alcohol. I'm like, no. of course he did. You're like, oh, it's so cute. You're like, look, this person. And I'm like, I that love that. Honestly, when we, we did a. This is her like, okay, this part we're like, cause like they're at the end. <laughs> So they're feeling real comfy now, like very comfy with each other. So now it's like, um, she, she's going to say like, just like, you're so famous, but you're still, you're so humble. I feel like Kathy might've caused toilet gate. Maybe she put all these things in her head. <laughs> Maybe she's like, I want to feel like all of my followers are like Kathy who just are obsessed with me. So everything we talked about on that podcast, I'm now going to use in this one TikTok. Because <laughs> now she's going to talk about how, you know, celebrities are texting her and stuff. And like, that's, you know, she wants to remain humble. <laughs> I FaceTime live with him last summer, I think. And he was like, hey, let me get your number. And, Kay- and I was like, okay, Brad Paisley. And I, sh- I saved it in my phone. And yesterday I was doing a podcast interview like this one. And I saw him, it popped up and I was like, what? I know. And then he was like, hey, I have this song. You want to hear it early? And I was like, what? Um, yes, I do. I do want to hear it early. What What world is this? I just love that you're, like, you're officially for sure famous, like with the capital F. And you're yeah. like, I'm, look, look at Reese Witherspoon. And like, she's watching you every day and like <laughs> wants to go to coffee yeah. tomorrow. And you're like, we're friends. It's so cute. Never lose that because that's no, what you're just no, it's been a really long time. I, you know what? I'll tell you this is a true story. I, years ago, I mean, okay, it was when my, my oldest son was like four months old. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, please stop growling. Um, my oldest save Jeffrey. <sighs> son was four months old and we went on our first trip without him. Um, and it was a business trip. My husband at the time was an executive at Disney and this was back when <laughs> corporations could. My, I love how she's like, so quirky. Like my husband at the time worked at Disney as if that's not the whole premise of her whole fucking book that everyone is like watching. That's most likely read by this point, like that likes her or even knows who she is. It's like, we know Dave, you had the morning show with him. He, we know he quit Disney. Like, Oh my God. She's just at this point in time. This is obviously again, February, 2021. She was referring to Dave as like, you know, like, Oh my, my, my former partner, my ex-husband, he was an executive at Disney, Psh, throwaway line. Like, we know who he is. You could still have big, you know, lavish yeah, executive, yeah. whatever. And so... Oh, my God. Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we got to clear it again. We got to clear the air again. Everyone's going to die at this story. Everyone's going to die at this story. You ready? Uh, clear, clear, clear. Okay. Yeah, Kathy is on our side, maybe. Maybe we should bring Kathy into the fold. Do we stand Kathy, or do we think that she really believes what she's saying? <laughs> 
She, as far as I know, first of all, she didn't like Rachel enough to keep this video public because it's unlisted. Okay. I don't know if she unlists all her videos or what, but you know, this one is, is unlisted. I'm just going to say that for the record. Um, and I don't think she's had Rachel back on the show. So, I mean, she's not that big of a fan or she likes her reputation better than taking a risk on someone she thinks is a good person. Just saying. Okay. Uh, get ready for this part. <laughs> get ready for this part. It's funny. So it was at, it was in Hawaii and we were, I had, Dave had gone out there early and then I flew out to meet him and then flying back together, we got to fly first class and he always flew first class. It was my first time ever. And we were riding in a limo from the hotel to the airport to fly home. And all of the executives were like, yeah, I mean, it's first class, but it's like the first class where it's like business seats really. And it's not really that nice. And, but, and they were like, and they were going off and I said something cause I am this person. And I was like, I hope to God that I never get used to first class. Like, I hope that I never say like, oh, but it's not the nicer oh version of this. God. And I still have it. So I keep journals for all of my kids. And I wrote a letter. It was like the start of keeping journals. So I wrote a letter to my son, who was four months at the time, and told him the story and said, I never want this for you. <laughs> my grandparents, who I'm like, was very close to, and I, they are still my angels, um, picked cotton and potatoes. And that's what I wrote to Jackson in that letter that day. Like you stand on the backs of giants who literally broke their back with she's crying again, education so that you could have the life that you have today. <laughs> and I will never take this for granted. And I never want to get used to it. And I think that I get to control that. Like I get to stay surprised and delighted by this life I never ever want to take for granted that someone that I admire and have seen in concert five times sent me a text like that'll never be normal no nope, it's not and she's got not that normal. same smug look like I just did the impossible I was relatable while also saying Brad Paisley's texting me and I also have my list and I tell women that my goal in life is to only fly first class while also saying I'm not the type that cares about that. <laughs> like, yikes. And I don't, yeah, the potatoes thing, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It came off a little bit insensitive about my grandparents pick cotton. I'm like, mm. Okay, I don't not believe you, but I just think that's a little, you should probably preface that with a bunch of things before you say that. And Kathy is just like, oh, I've never heard such amazing words from somebody before. This is pretty standard, Kathy. Normal. You're just so good. You're so good. It, may it just continue to be blessed. The path should be blessed and the coolest. May it just even be better. It's already been so good. Like let the surprises delight you like you can't even believe and it should just be good and easy. And because you, you've gone through a lot, like let it all be now just super smooth. Um, but Thank so good. You. Thank you for being here. So and then one month later, she was canceled <laughs> for Toilet Gate. So Kathy reverse manifested <laughs> Rachel's downfall. Ooh, man. I'm glad I, we shared this together as a, as a chat. <laughs> okay, it's been three hours. I, the other video that Lisa Bill you did is like two hours. Um, we can, okay, I'll just cut through the parts because there's like, we're not going to watch the two hours. It's not even worth it. Um, but we'll go through it kind of, not fast, but like, we'll do the quick version. Oh, man. So that's my theory. I'll keep working on it. I'll keep finding, I'll keep dropping hints on uh, random websites. <laughs> like, hey, Rachel's toilet gate was, was planned. I'm an insider in Valhalla's company. No, I won't do that. Okay, um, Lisa, Bill, you. I also think Lisa's like on, a, like trying to tell everybody she's getting divorced. Okay, wait. 
Now, this is just, this is probably mean. Kathy is still living her life, doing her podcast. Uh, You know, she's very, I'll just say, all I'll say about Kathy is that she's very tuned in to things that are said about her. She's very aware of any negative feedback that she's gotten from anyone on the internet. Let's just say that. She'll probably see this video. Um, Okay. Not to be a total mean person to talk about looks, but I had to do a double take. I'm like, Rachel did two videos? (laughs) No, that's two different people. (laughs) But you couldn't tell based on the close-up shot and the hair and everything about them looks the same. Um, okay. Let's. <clears throat> oh, what do I say about Lisa? Cause she posted, um, she posted on Instagram. She's been posting little things on, I'm just talking about Lisa now. Uh, she's been posting little things about like being strong on your own and standing up for yourself. And I mean, she also posts shit like this. So like whatever, but, um, like this one, I was like, are you trying to tell us something? I want her to get divorced. I have no stake in it at all, but I think she, she is like pretty talented and I think she could be better without Tom personally. Cause I see, I see it in her deep inside. There's something there that I'm like, you're probably a cool person, but like, because you're with this guy who's like, you know, into NFTs, <laughs> You're not living up to your full coolness. But what do I know? She also says, like, what up, homie? So not loving that. What up, homie? (laughs) Anyways, she also says homie in this, too. She's like, hi, homie. I'm like, click, click, click. Okay. You know, me 10 years ago wouldn't have told you that. I would have been like, overcome, rise above, power through, whatever. But what I've learned, you know, I'll be 40 in January. And what I've learned at this point in my life is... (laughs) We'll never know. (laughs) Rachel Hollis, welcome to Women of Impact. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here in person. Finally in person, girl. Yes, yes. Call me. (laughs) When I think of you, the only word that comes flashing in my mind is resilient. I'll take it. <laughs> it. So many of us go through hardship, go through difficulties, and whether it's relationships, business, matters of the heart, matters of the mind, and so many of us, when we go through those hardships, including myself, it's hard to get back up. It's hard to I take agree. that knock to the face and get back up, lean into who you want to be, and keep going. And go, you're freaking resilient, and I so want to learn, like, what are the tips and tactics you do so that you show up every freaking day in your business, in your relationship, in your family. All the things. All the things. Okay, (laughs) we're jumping right in. Rachel's got, she's in her I'm in heaven vibe going. I I live in, I'm in heaven now. I wear flowy white tops and linen white pants. Um, So I guess probably the biggest reason that I have that is a willingness I'm better than everyone. to look at my past. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, she looks at it. She doesn't address it or do anything about it or acknowledge it publicly, but she looks at it and she goes, meh. I feel like this is one of those things that everyone talks about, like, you're supposed to be strong, you're supposed to be resilient, you're supposed to do these things. And oftentimes we'll read the books or we'll watch the YouTube videos, listen to podcasts to try and learn how to be a certain way. But I think that if we can look at our past, like sort of look historically and find moments where we already were resilient, Mm -hmm. that actually gives us incredible power for how we navigate that in our current life. So the reason that I know to do that, honestly, is I had to teach it. Like, I think, I don't know if you feel like this, but when you write a book, create a podcast. I learned by my own teaching to other people who I don't care as much about. (laughs) They can learn from me before I can learn from myself because I'm more complicated. The simpletons have learned from me for years, but now I am ready to learn from myself by teaching others. What? Excuse me? 
if you're going to go give a keynote speech or a conference, um, you have to figure out how to explain the things that you know. And the very first time I did a RISE conference, it was only one day, and I was like, what could I teach people that I know how to do? Because I plan, it was like in that movie, I built it and then hoped they would come. <laughs> but once they said, okay, we'll come, I had no idea what I was gonna teach, literally. You know my best friend Beans, we were just like, let's throw a conference. Like, we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> so, um, I, I was like, what could I teach? And I looked. I at taught people how to be me. <laughs> okay. At my life. And I was like, well, I've been through a lot of shit. I've been through a lot of really hard stuff. So what do I know how to teach? I know how to teach getting through hard things. Mm -hmm. Literally. If the answer is find financial security as literally as fast as possible don't pay attention to any red flags get into a financial secure situation with somebody that makes more money than you and legally become part of their life and that will set you up for success as horrible as that is that's what she did and that's the tip that I think she could give people <laughs> Like she was not going to make it as an intern at Miramax without Dave's salary, keeping her in LA. Like she would have burnt out in a couple years. Instead, she got married to the first guy who walked in that, you know, was older and had an established career already. That was, you know, young enough, I guess, 27, 19, you know, okay, whatever. But, um, you know, that's her real tip there, but she doesn't want to say that. She wants to say, oh, I did all this stuff. It's like, no, but the big one, there's a, like, you can do a million little things that are little tips, but the big difference, you know, if like, for example, like there's all this debate about, you know, nepotism in Hollywood, obviously it exists, but like Steven Spielberg's daughter is directing a film with like, a, like, with like, I don't know, what's the guy's name? Like, um, the guy was in Rocky. Oh my God. Uh, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, yeah, she's a good director. Okay, but like, that's not the reason that you're doing that as your first movie. The reason is your dad is a successful director, one of the most famous directors in the world. Um, that's why, Rocky Balboa. Like, that's why, well, that's not his real name, whatever. <laughs> it's like, so the big thing is marry as soon as possible someone with financial security. Then you can take all these risks and go for your dreams. I just answered the question. If I'm an expert Stallone, at something, Stallone. I know how Thank to do you. that. I had a really difficult childhood. Um, uh, my parents' marriage was tumultuous is a nice way to say it. My dad had a very intense temper. Um, my older brother was schizophrenic. He took his own life when I was 14. Um, I had had to overcome and navigate a lot of... Again, we're talking about this story about the brother, like... Ha <sighs> Like, yes, it's something she had to overcome, but at the same time, it's like, that's his trauma, not yours. Like, it's your own trauma, but like that happening, I don't know. She brings it up too much, I think. I think maybe I'm just annoyed at this point. Things I moved out when I was 17 years old, moved to LA. Um, and I just, quite honestly, my life had been really hard and I didn't know that there, I didn't know there was another way. Like all my friends' lives were hard. I didn't know what it would look like to have a family where everyone was kind and loved each other and like nice. And so I, I don't know when it's your life, you just sort of figure it out. And that's what I had done. And so in looking back, I was like, well, dang, I know how to get through hard things and still believe in myself and still think that a dream could come true and still reach for joy. And uh, yeah. So that again, like, I think honestly, the answer is have, if more people were financially secure, meaning they didn't have $20 million of debt out of school, if they had, you know, if, if housing was more affordable, if people were able to, you know, not have to take out credit cards to buy food and like, if things were more equal or if we were more sharing as a society, now this is obviously my perspective. Yeah, a lot of these things would apply then the playing field will be even and then we could have self-help i think self-help doesn't work unless the playing field is is equal or i guess it's like this unsaid thing of like this only applies if you have a disney executive husband like let me just say that for the for the record like if you're dealing with anything less than that this these, this advice is not going to work <laughs> 
So, but then these people don't work to make the world more equal. That's the part I don't understand. If like, if you really believe in this, help bring up more people to the level you're at. And then you can talk about what to be grateful for and to, you know, choose joy and that sort of thing. But like when the field is so crazy, it just doesn't apply. And then it becomes like nothing. It's meaningless. That's what I started to teach. And when you're trying to figure out how to teach something, you sort of unpack it and you look at it and you're like, what are the things that I know? So it's the best piece of advice I can give anyone because every single person, everyone watching this, listening to this, you, the camera guy, everybody could look at their past and look for things that they had to overcome. And what I always think is like these hard seasons that we get inside of, inside I always of. think it's been way worse. It's been way worse. No matter what I go through, I'm like, well, it's not the day that your brother died. Okay, well, it's not the day that um, this hard thing happened or this horrible thing happened. We're not in that. And remember that you navigated that and remember you came out and remember you were stronger. Like that history is what gives me courage in this moment. And I think can give anybody courage no matter what they're going through. Dude, that's so freaking powerful. But as you were talking, I was thinking about how many people are so scared to go back mm. and remember because they've held on to so much emotion that's connected to that event, right? Sh certain shame, certain guilt, yes. certain embarrassment. There's all these feelings that we put on ourselves and that we block the past out so that we don't feel the same thing we felt back then. Right. So how do you start to go back to that without bringing up those same feelings that then make you stuck again? Well, I think you have to let yourself feel all the things. That's what I've learned. And that's scary and that's hard. And, you know, me 10 years ago wouldn't have told you that. I would have been like, overcome, rise above, power through, whatever. But what I've learned, you know, I'll be 40 in January. And what I've learned at this point in my life is if you don't process it in the moment, you're going to process it for the next decade or two or three. There is no escaping the emotions of the hard mm. stuff that we go through, mm. period. Like if you don't- So don't choose joy, choose sadness, merch available. <laughs> is that what you're saying, Rachel? <laughs> like, again, like I'm all for changing your mind, but you gotta like allow your audience to understand like you've changed this. When she wrote Girl, Wash Your Face was, she wrote this in 20, well, she wrote it like before, but it came out in 2018. That's not that long ago. It's like less than a decade ago, less than five years ago. Like we're acting like, you know, oh, I used to think choose joy back in 1985, but now I've been different. I've really learned. It's like, you got to you gotta keep people up to date on your changing opinions or else we don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Process what you're feeling. If you don't allow yourself to feel scared, um, pissed, shamed, all of those things, if you don't allow them to go through you, you're gonna feel them forever and it's gonna take a way harsher toll on your life, on your physical health, on your mental and emotional health, your relationships, all of it. So I've just learned to let myself feel all, the, feel all those things in the moment. And sometimes that moment could be weeks or months, but I come out the other side and I really have resolved the way that I feel. I really have gotten through those issues as opposed to, oh, I'm gonna- Have you? <laughs> revisit this again mm. and again for the rest of my life. So that's a big one for me is like, let yourself feel that, but also, to acknowledge that really, truly no bullshit, every single person makes mistakes. Every single person. And we say that, but I feel like the society mm. that we live in tries to make that untrue. Mm. Like, I feel like social media, I feel like our families, friends, in-laws, people want in so laws? badly <laughs> to remind us again and again and again of who we used to be, of the things that we once did, of past mistakes, of Ugh. mistakes that had nothing to do with us, but oh, remember your mom tried to do this when she, at, when she was your age and look what happened to her. Like there's so much that goes into it that it makes us believe that we're supposed to be perfect mm -hmm. and we're supposed to get it right every single time. And I just, I refuse to buy into that. No one's it's saying really that. It's painful 
No one has ever said, Rachel, you must be perfect every single time or we are not participating in your you know theatrics anymore <laughs> no one's ever said that all we're asking for is accountability is if you're gonna pretend and say that you're authentic and and you're an amazing person like just just live up to that that's it and there's certain things that i would think in my mind are required to have that title of like you're such an amazing person okay how about you apologize like correctly or stop change like lying it's like the lying and the misrepresenting things is what bothers me and she hasn't stopped doing that and so i'm like i'm still off board i have i've i'm sinking i'm not being rescued by you know the lifeboat of a, a good rachel hollis comeback story like I, I i'm trying i'm i'm like trying to tread water as long as i can but like it ain't happening <laughs> When something goes wrong or when you have a mistake or when you fall down, obviously that it hurts so much. But I have said since my first podcast. And the same thing, I'll just say this for the record, and I'm going to like skip around soon to the other parts where she talks about like her panic attack and whatever, that we're going full circle back to Heidi's panic attack. Um, I want to play the gluten part, which I think is next, um, and then the panic attack, and then that's basically it. They, similar to, um, to Heidi, does not go into many details at all. It's very high level, like, when you're going through trauma, you need to think of things that are, like, very important to you, and, like, there's no examples, like, hey, this is what happened, or this is what I think, or here's a very tactical thing. It's very much, like, buzzword, buzzword, buzzword inside of buzzword community buzzword resilience buzzword hard things like there's no depth in this interview at all for two hours i'm like i learned like two things tiny things that are really inconsequential cast episodes since the very first time i wrote a book for as long as i've been doing this work i have said like i'm gonna get this wrong because i'm a human and i'm trying my best and when i get it wrong you're going to see me acknowledge it. You're going to see me stand back up. You're going to see me learn and grow and do better. And mm. that's what, for the rest seen of that. my life, that's what's going to happen. But that only happens. Again, she hasn't taken, to me, has not taken full accountability for toilet gate still to this day. And I say that and I could be corrected, but you know, when she did the skinny confidential podcast, that was like my time to go, okay, this is her coming out and, and making a statement about it, you know, with time passing. And she didn't basically change the entire narrative of what had happened to make it untrue. She railed against cancel culture and she basically said like, oh no, I didn't even say anything bad. It's like, okay, then there's, then we, there's nothing that can be done further at this point. If you're not even willing to go, I was so up my own ass that I couldn't even see that I was like, you know, privileged in so many ways that I lost myself. Like, that's what I want to hear. And maybe that's just not true for her, but like, that's what I would need to like go, okay, you know, I think she's like seeing what I see. Happens if we really believe that all human beings should have the chance to mess up and go again. Because if we believe that for everybody, we'll give that to ourselves. Oh God, yes, that is so true. And there's that moment of giving yourself the grace that I don't think many of us do. And I'm, you, I'm really leaning into that phrase right. so much yeah. because every time I go to beat myself up, I'm like, oh, Elisa, you're human. Give yourself the grace. Right. And just by saying that phrase, literally give. Okay, not to be mean, but I just had a thought. Lisa looks like she's about to go to the Jersey Shore, <laughs> like be on, go work at the boardwalk. <laughs> That's the vibe, I'm kidding. Give yourself the grace. Right. Means, work at the oh, t-shirt shop. you're human, cool. The one thing I'd love to ask is that process that you said, right? Acknowledge it, own it, you're yeah. human, yeah. get back up. It's that falling and getting back up. Um, do you fall. do that for yourself? So I know you said like showing other people. Right? And like, what does like, like hey, getting look. back up mean? Like you keep making podcasts, like you keep hosting events. Like, is that what you mean? Or is there something else? Like it's all vague again. Like if I'm doing it, you can too. But how much of that is like, that is what you, that's the recipe you need to make sure that you keep showing up? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on the circumstance, the season, what's going on, what has happened. No Certainly shit. as a mom of four, and I work and I support my family, like I don't have the option of just not 
working anymore. I don't mm. have the option of just being like, all right, I'm good. I'm going to go live on an island and process this pain for the next two years. I think like most. Again, like this part kind of surprised me. This was like one crumb of tea, <laughs> crumb of, of something. It's like, she she's like, I don't have the luxury of not working for two years. It's like, didn't you tell your staff that you could just like fuck off to an island? Like you could go to Hawaii anytime you wanted. Didn't you make $20 million in like 2018? Like, am I just like crazy? Or did you blow through all that money in two years? Like, I know she's got to pay Dave off or whatever, but like he's buying like Teslas and mansions for Heidi, like allegedly. I mean, I don't really know what their stuff is, but like she doesn't, she has to work. I'm surprised by that. She doesn't have the luxury like other other women do. Parents, most people, even if you don't have kids, I think every single person has someone in their life who's counting on them. And so oftentimes mm -hmm. those other people will become a catalyst for me to rise again. And I'll rise again before I have the uh, the wherewithal before I have the emotion mm. before it because it's like okay we have to at least in some capacity we have to whether it's like literally like physically standing back up and going again um you know coming what up does that mean side, though the divorce of work tactically getting going again going again what like just living every day or like something else I'm just I don't I I, I struggle maybe I'm like dumb but I I, I struggle when there's not concrete like for example like when I blah 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 like I need that extra and I feel like I'm just not getting it and I didn't get it at all this interview for kids was so difficult because you're not just holding space for your own pain you're also helping them through something and in those instances, when the kids were with me I didn't have the option of going and crawling in bed and pulling the covers mm -hmm. over my head because I have four little kids who are counting on me to be strong and I feel really adamant about that because I know everybody has their own story and their own way of dealing with things, but I had memories from my childhood that were very painful of feeling like my parents didn't try and be strong for the kids. Mm. And so for me, it was very important, like, damn, even if I don't feel like I have all the answers, I haven't done enough therapy at that point, I hadn't you know, processed all these things yet, I could at least <laughs> physically go through the motions, literally get out of bed, take a shower, make their breakfast, make their lunch, get them to school. They're gonna go to school. Okay, I'm gonna go have a good cry for a long time mm -hmm. and then get myself back together before I pick them up so that, because that's what I needed as a little kid and so that's what I wanted to give them. So I think oftentimes the other people in our lives can be a really powerful catalyst. And there's a study that says, um, that women are terrible. <laughs> what study? I need the citations, please. I don't believe a study show. Research shows. No, it doesn't, probably. <laughs> or the research is done by, like, one person who just, like, wrote it on Reddit. I need more. A study? No. <laughs> Negotiating for themselves and, like, salaries mm -hmm. or jobs or whatever. But when they negotiate for others, they're actually better than men. So women will are stronger negotiators when they are fighting for someone else. Yeah. So I actually think yeah. it's a really powerful tool for women to, if you can't find it in yourself to stand up and go again, you go. who needs you to be strong right now? That's very powerful. And I kind of think though that there's like that almost like like anything, if you do it too much, now you're not doing it for yourself, right? right. Now you keep getting up for everybody else. Right. And when do you start breaking that cycle, especially if it's a relationship? Right. Because I've heard you talk about codependency and you know we've spoken many yeah. times about just independency and codependency. Yeah. And, but where do you then break <laughs> that cycle? Yeah. Where you and- All women, uh, this is a study guys, it's a study. Researchers have said this for years. All women <laughs> love Gucci. <laughs> now being dependent on your kids to get you out, emotionally right. get you out of bed, right. or work to emotionally get yeah. you out of bed versus I'm healing, so right. I'm getting out of bed. Yeah, I mean, I think with, for me at least, that has been a really powerful component of just getting back up. Mm. Not the whole mm. process, because I think you can get up for other people, but ultimately any healing work is always and only ever going to be for yourself.
because we all know there are plenty of parents in the world right now who got up again because the kids needed them to, but never actually did the work yeah. that needed to be done for them. And I hope that as we get older, we start to not want to live anymore with the pain, with the result of the trauma that we experienced when we were earlier, that we want to heal from those things. And I think the most difficult part about healing, and I've learned this a lot over the last two years, is that solo work. Mm. Nobody, it doesn't matter. You could have the most supportive partner in the entire world. Like I do. Family, all the resources, all the money, you could have all of it. But that is solo work. That is you by yourself and it's fucking hard. It is so hard to go to therapy every single week. It I is agree. so hard to think that you- I will agree with her what she's saying here. I don't know if she, you know, if it's relevant to her or whatever work she's doing, I don't know. You know, she's doing like energy healing with someone who is her also her friend, so red flag. But, um, you know, what the premise of what she's saying is true. I agree. Like, going to therapy every week is hard. Opening up yourself to a stranger to talk about these things that you don't like about yourself, that you are falling short on, that, like, are triggering, that bring up other memories. and th- It sucks. It's hard. It shouldn't be sold as, like, 10 tips to fix your anxiety today. Like, I hate those clickbait videos because you know it's bullshit it's like if it was that easy everyone would do it and you know a lot of people are suffering and not going to therapy that need it because it is such hard work so I will agree I'll give her you know one percent more (laughs) three (laughs) percent chance of of some uh positive vibes her way okay bye Ah. hello okay Katie's done with this she's over it You've gotten past something and then it pops up again. It is so hard to feel like you're repeating past mistakes or that you're, you know, continuing generational trauma or or any of it. It's solo work. And ultimately, everybody in your life benefits from it. But that is like you by yourself in a desert facing you. Mm -hmm. And it's freaking brutal. So what is it that makes you keep going? Because to your point, most people don't do the work because it's that hard. Yeah. Because facing yourself, facing maybe the mistakes you've made, maybe, (laughs) you know, facing certain emotions. Yeah, you tell her, Lisa, the mistakes you made, Rachel. ...that you've had. I've heard you talk about you've, you know, in looking back, you kind of like were ignoring certain signs. Mm -hmm. that A lot of us, we ignore them out of um, protection, out of emotional protection. And we don't even give ourselves the space to ask the questions question right. about what that sign may mean. Right. So how do you start to assess that and self-soothe all at the same time so you can get through the work? Because yeah. I think that that's the hard part is that you start to emotionally feel disrupted as you're starting to do the work. It feels very uncomfortable. Good look. It, you maybe start to look inwards. Oh my God, maybe this is my fault. Blame. I do that myself. So I'm speaking for myself. But you have to get past it to then do the work to then see the results and be able to move on. Even the chapter titles are like vague. I'm like, I watched this already in its entirety and then like the chapter titles aren't helping me understand which part is which. It's like, (laughs) overcome fear, failure, mistakes, embracing your cycle and hormones. Like, okay, I know she talked about hormones for like a whole thing. Thank you, Kimberly. Kimberly says, I feel like this tour is hitting her hard and after it's over, we are going to see her try to shift into another audience. It'll be interesting. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, I, I, I'm surprised she gave the interview with the skinny confidential when she did because she did it. And I think maybe she thought she would be accepted back because she was like very much, I'm not, I don't want to do women's advice anymore. I'm, I just want to do cool shit with cool people. And maybe she thought that her new boyfriend was going to become a husband or something and that she could just kind of like chill and do creative projects. And maybe he's not that into it right now. Maybe, this is just me guessing. I don't know. And, you know, so now she like she does have to work and she does have to keep doing like the income source that she has because something changed between the skinny confidential where she was like, I don't want to give women advice anymore to now doing this tour all of a sudden. It doesn't make sense necessarily why she would publicly say all those things and then immediately retract it and then go back to motivation unless there was a money element involved, I think. But. Who knows? But that moment Thank you, of disruption where people are like, yeah, this is too difficult. Yeah. What on earth 
makes you going back to Miss freaking resilient? Right. What makes you keep going? What is that thing? Even when you don't feel it, because I don't think you're abnormal. I think that you're very human and that you just think in a way that allows you to keep going even when you're in pain, even when you're hurt, even when you're feeling all the feels, you keep going. And so if we can bottle that up and give it to everyone yeah. like that, it's magic right yeah. there. Yeah, my greatest core value is evolution. It's, it's my guiding light. It's my guiding principle. It is everything to me, mm -hmm. is I want to become a better person. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we're all here. And I think that a better person to you looks very different than it does to me, than it does to him, than it does to anybody mm -hmm. who's listening or watching this. And that's what I think is so beautiful about life is that we're all on this individual journey and we can all coexist in this desire to become a better version of ourselves, even though that looks like a million different things. So for me, I, if I'm calling that shot and I'm saying that what I want most is to evolve, what I want is to get to the end of my life and be like, fuck yeah, man, I didn't leave anything unturned. I didn't, you know, I didn't leave anything behind. I didn't keep stuff with me that wasn't serving me anymore. I became the very best version of myself. If that's what I want, then that's going to be painful because change is always painful. Everything that we want to grow or make different, if you look at nature, if you look at our own body, when we break a muscle down to make it stronger, all of it is going to come at some cost. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's deeply painful. But what I found is that the, the results that you get, the rewards that you get, it's exponential growth. It's not yeah, again, like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm going to get back up and it's growth. Like none of these words mean anything to me. They're just words, word salad emoji. Like there's nothing I'm not getting. I'm getting nothing. It's giving nothing as they say. Like it's so vague. It's not slowly, you know, going get to the gluten part in the graph. It's like a hockey stick. <laughs> You guys have experienced this too. It's like you're willing to push yourself into deeply uncomfortable situations. Let me tell you, Lindsay, this, if you watch Selling Sunset season one, this is the house that was $40 million or $20 million that was being built in the Hollywood Hills. And they're like, we're going to find a person to buy this house. And guess who bought it? Tom Bilyeu. Lisa's husband. So yes, they probably write off the whole house as like, oh, this is where we, our headquarters is. It costs us $40 million to have this YouTube channel, <laughs> the most expensive YouTube studio in the world. Uh, you know, we don't pay taxes. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but that's, it's in their house, I believe. And that looks like different things at different okay. times where I probably am making an excuse because that's what I've got. Oh, okay. Sure. If you look at our own body, when we break a muscle down to, I want to just find the key parts, but I don't. I don't know this enough to like go through it. So I'm sorry. Exponential growth. It's not slowly, you know, going a little mm. bit up in the graph. It's like a hockey stick. <laughs> you guys have experienced this too. It's like you're willing to push yourself into deeply uncomfortable situations. They were not on the show, unfortunately. They sold it in season two or three, but they never covered it. But you know who also works on Selling Sunset, apparently, like behind the scenes, is Graham Stephan. And Graham Stephan's like a YouTuber, so I'm sure that's how maybe like he knew Tom Bilyeu, perhaps. But yeah, it wasn't, a sh it was just, that was the house. And that looks like different things at different times. But because you put yourself into such a big discomfort, you also are experiencing such greater results, such a greater, you know, in business mm -hmm. terms, such a greater return on what you've just done. So mm -hmm. it's not for everybody. And I can't tell you how many times I've been like crying and like, this is hard. And what of it? Why is this so difficult? But what's difficult? Like, oh, what? Right. Because you said that this is your greatest value. 
what do you do about excuses? Because as you were saying that, I was like, I totally hear you. Like, A, it's um, if you've experienced it once, if you've gone through real hardship and you see the hockey stick improvement in yourself, you then can use that as an example for future moments that you're going through. But what if, A, you don't have that moment as proof of concept, right? if you will, how would you start to orient? And then also the excuses part, because I think so many of us, part of excuses is they feel very real to you. Yes. And, and there are times where they are real. That, exactly. Yeah. So I'm, in I, those moments, how do you not use an excuse to be like, well, that's why I'm not there, though. It's not right. because of I'm not trying. Right. Okay, just a thought that I don't know what they're talking about, honestly. I'm sort of like zoning out because it's boring. <clears throat> but I re-listened to some old content. And the one thing that bothered me, Rachel, about a year ago, so around the time of like when we with the Kathy Heller interview when she was with her boo thing and she was kissing him under the starlights and whatever. She did a podcast and she said, the reason why I didn't hit all my goals this year, all my financial goals and all of my life goals is because I've been busy making out with somebody. And I literally like screamed. I was like, what are you talking about? That's not the reason. And I'm like, that's not the reason. And I just think like the more I'm thinking about this and the more sort of like stuff that gets uncovered and like the more I just listen and hear her and I, I'm very familiar with her tone and like all the things that she says, I think she's got a lying problem. And maybe she lies to herself so much that you believe it over time, but she really does lie a lot. It's not just like, oh, she's, you know saying it this way and that no it's like full-on lies it's like cheat because like the whole thing with the skinny confidential she lied because the way that the live stream was she said oh i was standing up for a woman with depression and i was telling her not to like telling people like stop bullying her like that didn't happen i went back and watched it that wasn't what happened it was like you know 10 minutes apart like they were it was completely lied it's just a lie at a certain point it's a lie telling people on a podcast, oh, thousands of you have bought and tick bought tickets, and it's not true. That's a lie. Like I try to give her credit. Like, well, maybe she doesn't know, but I think she knows. And the thing about like back then, like, oh, the reason why I'm not, you know, succeeding at my business is because of my boyfriend and my boo, and I'm just so in love. It's like that's a lie. I'm sorry. That's why I don't. I don't. I don't like her because she lies so much. It's not like oh, I kind of think like okay, we can debate like you know, what's right and what's wrong. But no, lying is wrong. That's right. it. I, it's funny because there are times in my life where I was making an excuse. I'm sure there's certainly something in my life right at this moment I'm making an excuse mm -hmm. about. But it is necessary for the other parts to work in this moment. I really believe, I'm sure... Tom Bilyeu would disagree, but I really do <laughs> believe that every single one of us is doing the best that we can with the tools, the resources, the access we have in this moment. A year from now or five years from now, hopefully those tools, resources, access, hopefully it'll be different. Mm. But right now, even people in your life who are awful, right? You maybe have some family members or maybe people watch you got a terrible parent and they did these crappy things to you even in that instance, they still are just doing the best that they can in that moment. Their best. I mean, also, here's another example. And I think like, okay, we're at four hours. We might have to do a part two. Maybe I can do it tomorrow. Is everyone free tomorrow? <laughs> Meet here, same time, same place um, to finish this. And I can kind of pull some more stuff together because I'm, I'm getting I'm getting pee pee syndrome. I need to pee my pants. And I haven't laughed enough at Rachel's content. Um, but do you like, okay. Think of the way that she tells the story about not only the tampon story, which I highly believe, I don't, I highly doubt it's a real story. Like, oh, you really had sex with Dave. Okay, this is what Rachel claims. I'm going to go to my full screen. You claim, Rachel, that you had sex with your husband while you had a tampon lodged inside of you for multiple weeks and didn't feel it, it had no complications or any sort of medical problems, and then eventually you just took it out and were fine. Okay, that seems highly unlikely. And then the second part of that story, talking about like lying, 
second part of that story is that she told that on Oprah's stage and claims that, you know, oh, the experience was so amazing. But I also told, like, Oprah said that there was a weird story to tell, but like, that's why people like me because I tell true stories about myself. It's like, I don't think Oprah was, in, 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 and then she to, sort of told it like, oh, so Oprah and I laughed in the sunset. Like it was all good after that, you know? And, but she never posted anything of like, sh- there was like screen grabs of Oprah and Rach talking, but they only posted the photos. So I'm like, maybe Oprah said something like, girl, you're never coming back to this. Like that was horrible. That was disgusting. Like, I don't want to hear about your tampons. You know, I, that's the thing. It's like, you know, I don't really believe that whole narrative about Oprah and all that. Then, you know, she's talking about Dave, like, oh, Dave has a double life and he did this and that and this and that, but never goes into detail. But then honestly, as much as I don't like Dave, Dave has not once that I remember talk shit about Rachel ever. He's like stood up for her and said, like defended her multiple times and said the only thing that he was truthful about was that, you know, she dumped me. And like, cause she was trying to make it seem like, oh, it's a mutual decision. And he was like, well, I got dumped and I feel stupid about it. And that's why people took his side in the beginning. Now he's had his own issues and I'm not going to defend him on those, but like, I was going back through his old stuff and he, he even like defended her after the divorce, after it was like, you know, later in time, he was like, I, I, you know, she's still the mother of my children, which I think is a great thing to say and stand up for your ex-wife. Like, you know, and she has done the opposite. Now, I don't know what's gone on between them and maybe something is egregious, but like she's made it seem like, oh, it's ha- it happened during the marriage that all these issues were going on and that, you know, she couldn't say anything or didn't know and realize later. I don't buy it either. I think it's just uh, trying to fix her image in some way, like that she just didn't get sick of him. Like, oh, she's not the type that just got sick of a guy and wanted to move on and have fun with her life. No, she's the type that got hurt in some way and had no choice but to leave. I just don't buy it. I'm sorry. Like, because especially in the old stuff, the way she used to talk about, you know, before, like before the last year, really, she talked about the divorce, like it was a million little things. It just wasn't working. I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. And that seems more real. And then all of a sudden it changed because people didn't accept that as like a great answer. It's like, well, why would you break up your family? Just like, why didn't you go to therapy? Why didn't you try? Because they didn't, they said they didn't go to anything. They never like, you know, Heidi and Chris apparently went to seven therapists and it couldn't fix it. They went to zero and never fought allegedly and never talked about what was wrong and then just got divorced. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but she doesn't want to be judged. She's so afraid to be judged negatively that she'll change the story. And I don't know if she's aware because maybe it's like, what do they call it? When it's like not um, pathological, it's like pathological or it's like compulsory. Like you can't, it's not like you're trying to lie. It's just like, you can't stop. Maybe that's what it is. It's just on a lower level and she's got the whole world watching the whole world, like, um, you know, a small, in this large scope of the world, it's a small group, but we're watching and, you know, I think there's a lot left unsaid or changed to make her look better, personally. Uh, Katie says, thank you for the marathon live, Kia. You know, I ran a marathon today with no training. (laughs) I hosted a, a, a marathon with zero training. Everyone should do it. It's empowering. Uh, this is just stupid. <laughs> that is stupid. Um, and while we're at it, now that we're done with today's stream, you have to think instead of sitting around eating Skittles and watching Oprah reruns. Back to our Oprah. <laughs> Back to our Oprah tampon stories. Um, yeah, that's a good point too. Uh, Andrea or Andrea, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it's like she told she tells a story about her kids and like how they're at Mother's Day brunch or whatever, and and someone's like, "You are so mean," or you were you used to be, or what did she say? You the kid said you used to be nicer or something, and she's like, "Well, now I have to stand up and be a parent because you know." And then her other son said, "Like, well, someone else won't be the parent to us, so we have like." airing the dirty laundry without airing it and wanting to be like, oh, I'm, I'm above talking negatively about my husband, but then like still talking negatively about him, just being vague about it. It's just like, again, it's like she wants to be held to this really high standard or seen as as like above everyone else person, but literally is dealing with the same shit that I'm dealing with. It's like, do I talk shit? Do I gossip behind their back? I kind of want to, and I'm going to do it, but I don't think of myself as like, 
holier than thou, I'm going to host a conference about all my beliefs on things, you know? Like, I guess that's the difference. It's like when you don't put yourself on the pedestal, you're allowed to kind of like live a little bit more free. And that's what I'm choosing to do. So choose sadness, choose not being a, choose not being a guru. (laughs) That should be the next merch line. Choose not to be a guru. That's your mental health tip of the day. That's the best advice a guru can give. Choose not to become a guru, please, for all of our sakes. Uh, Thank you, Jen. I see it's coming through. It's going to come up in a second. Jen says, I hate that tampon story. Yeah, well, I've heard it like six times (laughs) watching different content because she told it at Rise Austin or Rise, the last Rise that happened on Labor Day last year where like 40 people showed up. Um, she told that story and she told, um, what she told another story that was like gross. She told the farting story. She's like, me, Dave, Dave and I never farted in front of each other. I'm like, why, what is, is this for entrepreneurs? Like, can we talk about something other than like your bodily functions for five minutes, please? Can we talk about like a P and L? Can we talk about filing your taxes quarterly? Cause that's what entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, uh, Jen, I don't know if you know, but I'm an entrepreneur and I'm, I'm above everybody. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneurial guru. Um, these are things that like are actually things you need to work on and do. Like I don't need to know what Rachel Hollis's like vagina, you know, is up to these days. It's not going to help me with the IRS. <laughs> like and I know there's some motivation stuff like keep going, fight for it. But like she's barely an entrepreneur. Like she, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she is. I mean, she was, she was, she had a whole team, which is a big thing, but are you truly an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, like, okay, for example, here's a good example. I worked for a startup before, right? They would get millions of dollars through seed investors and whatever. And they would say like, oh, we're a multi-million dollar company. They hadn't turned a profit at all, but they were like, we're a multi-million dollar company. Yeah. Because people gave you investment funds. So it's like, you're not a successful entrepreneur. Like you might be a good, like, um, campaigner, but you haven't proven that you're an entrepreneur until you've actually like created a business that is like, you know, generating more income or more profits than it is to, to like be sold or whatever. So for her, it's like, you created a huge company in two years. That is impressive in its own right, but it doesn't prove that you are a successful long-term business owner. It grew, like she said, a hockey stick. Her business went from, you know, herself and a couple people to like 60 people and then dropped down back to herself. Do I find that to be a success story? No, I don't. I find that to be, oh, sort of a failure of a story. To be honest, I hate to say it, but it's true. It's like, there is some things to glean from it. But is she the know-all, be-all, entrepreneur, boss babe? No, absolutely not. <sighs> Same thing with marriage advice. Actually, I took a screenshot before we go. So we left on, let me write down the timestamp, 1924 out of a two-hour video. <laughs> but I'll go in and I'll capture the, the good, important moments because, I, like I said, it's not even worth listening to the whole thing, to be quite honest. I'll do that tomorrow. That'll be my job tomorrow. Um, I screenshotted a couple things. That came, I just searched Rachel Hollis and, on Facebook, which I'm never on, and this is what popped up, like her best stuff, meaning like them promoting the, the Rise Together scam. Um, let's see. Okay, this is from... September 24th, 2018. Okay. It says, this work is hard. It's so, so good. So 2018, she was already having major issues with Dave because she said she had issues with him for like five years. And that was, you know, in 2020. So, okay, this is two years before they got divorced in 2020. This weekend, we held our first couples conference our first. After our last Rise Co. Women's Conference, we got countless requests for something similar for couples. And so, like with most things, we walked out in faith and decided to build something because it was needed, not because we had any idea how. We stood in a room with hundreds of couples and we talked about it all, communication and love language and personal growth. There's poor Sherry there. (laughs) She has to go to the background like, oh, Sherry, you have to come for the love language session. 
it's part of my uh, my scam. I mean, my my plan to uh, go viral. Uh, and personal growth and relationship values. And we ended the day with a very candid conversation about sex that still makes me want to die a thousand times over from embarrassment. Yeah, okay. We shared truths we've never spoken about publicly, vulnerable to the core, because we believe that if we're honest, it might give you permission to be honest too. Okay, yeah, you are real honest. You were real honest back in 2018, I'm sure. How You're like, oh, we're on the brink of divorce. We'll be, we'll be divorced in two years. It was incredible and beautiful. It was also so much responsibility to carry. There were new couples, couples who had been together 30 plus years and couples who were in the midst of divorce. Dear God, I kept praying, why in the world did you trust me with this? Who am I to try and help? Yeah, good questions for God there. Did he answer? This work requires so much emotionally because I can't ask you to be vulnerable if I won't go there myself. Okay, did you go there yourself? Because you say now that he was living a, du- living a double life at that point. Okay, sorry. Um, let me see. It's impossible to be both vulnerable and impenetrable. I don't know how to not carry your pain. Oh my God, I didn't read this before. This is so bad. I do not know how, I, okay, sorry. I don't know how to not carry your pain with me. And since I'm speaking to groups like this often, I'm constantly processing this kind of weight. This works, take, this works, takes massive heart and empathy. And here's the du- the du- here's the duel. Okay, sorry, let me start over. This works takes massive heart and empathy, and here's the deal. I can't do it in armor. And the work you're doing, you can't do it safely tucked behind emotional walls. Andy Minio, I don't know that, who that is, has this great song called You Can't Stop Me, add it to your B.A playlist immediately that says my god is good but he's not safe i keep thinking of that line today god is good but often leaning into who god calls us to be oh god it sounds like dave's writing god is good but often leaning into who god calls us to be the potential he gave us isn't safe or comfortable whether that's building a business being a good mama or working to save your marriage It's hard work. It's exhausting. Other people might not understand it and might outright mock you for it. Do it anyway. Do it because it's right. Do it because it's needed. Needed. Do it if it's. Do it even if it's hard. Rise together, Austin. Rise weekend. And there they are. Those are. They're all the people who are paying thousands of dollars to be coached by these people. Sucks. Because you think it's real. You think it's real when someone's, when someone's bold enough to, to claim stuff like that and to go, you know, okay, oh, here's another one. Um, you know, this is who I am. You really buy it because you're like, there's no way that's bullshit. That would be bold as fuck. And it's like, then it turns out it is bullshit. You're like, damn. That's why like people like Anna Delvey, you know, can come from wherever and come to New York City and go, like, I, I'm an heiress and I'm going to, you know, open this, you know, Nobu art cafe. And people are like, here's a million dollars. Because it's like, you were like, there's no way this person could lie and say that their marriage is so good that they're willing to do a conference. And then you find out later, you're like, damn, I was bamboozled. <laughs> here's another one. Okay, this one's from January 2019. I did not read this yet. That's not a good image of Dave. But look at him, hold it hand in hand. We're a strong united couple in 2019. Okay, less than a year later, they're, well, no, a year later plus they're divorced. There are all sorts of books that dive into relationship advice, but if you ask me and Dave Hollis, these seven things are at the heart of a great romantic relationship no matter how long you've been together. Have a quick read about them here. P.S. Tickets for Rise Code Dallas are on sale Monday at noon. (laughs) And I clicked the link and it was no longer could be found. So there you go, folks. <laughs> there you go, folks. I still believe that the best hope for both Dave and Rachel are for them to get back together. Business-wise, mental health-wise, awful idea. Business-wise, I would read the book. 
I will continue to talk about them. I think they could they could get on national news. They could, you know, prove the haters wrong. It's the only option. It's the only option. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. We will reconvene tomorrow. I will announce the time. Um, if you would like to be a member and use those cool emojis, uh, just go on the channel and join. There is an issue, I guess, with joining on phones. I don't, I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know. There's, it, you, it's better to do it on desktop if you can. And then if you are a branded YouTube channel for some reason, like you have like a company channel, it might not let you join. Just FYI, you might have to join on like a Gmail YouTube, if that makes sense, like a personal one, because for some reason they're not allowing branded ones to join. So yeah, and I would love to see you there, but if you're not, no pressure. But if you want more emojis, some are coming soon. More are coming soon. Um, that is an option. All right. Peace, everybody. Tarot's wanting me to come and pet her now. So that's why. It's not because I want to leave. It's because Tarot needs me. <laughs> Goodbye.